What is it about baseball that inspires us to dream? With the century coming to a close, we again come back to baseball, the great American game. In April of 1912, a ship named Titanic sank and a ballpark named Fenway first opened its gates. In 1933, the first All-Star game was played and with striking perfection, the Babe hit the game's first home run. Once again, it is summertime in America and with its warmth comes the Midsummer Classic and the park whose unique character makes it so special. And tonight, the legends of the game will come. Hey! Is this heaven? No. It's Iowa. A cornfield that was transformed into a field of dreams allowed America to again believe in baseball's magic. And tonight, for love of the game, the imagination of this country will once again be captured by all the players of the game today and by its story past. It's the American League and the National League playing in the All-Star Game, a game between baseball's best. The beauty of baseball is marked by its players, from the Babe to Mighty Mac, from the Splendid Splinter to Nomar, from Say Hey to Sammy. On no other night do baseball stars shine as brightly. The perfect nine against nine, a piece of wood and some leather. These are the tools of their trade. People will always come back to baseball. They call it our pastime, but more appropriately, it is our present and our future. In this final summer of the 20th century, tonight's All-Star Game will be played beneath Boston's giant green monster. It just wouldn't be right anywhere else. Ladies and gentlemen, in celebration of this, the last all-star game of the 20th century, we now present the greatest collection of baseball talent ever gathered on one ballpark field. Ladies and gentlemen, your all-century all team greats, Two past commissioners, Carlton Fisk, Tom Seaver, 35,000 rabbit fans, George Brett, Tonight, the unending threat of baseball of the 20th century. Raleigh Fingers, Joe Morgan. That thread tied off neatly in what amounts to an all-time all-star game. Good evening from Fenway Park as the chills run through everybody in this house. This is the Blockbuster All-Star pregame show. Alongside Steve Lyons, I'm Keith Olbermann, and we are now multiplying it by many times. A great game in a big place to have it with an epic moment here. Keith, I played in this town, and when you play well in front of these fans, they are the best fans in the country. When you play poorly in front of them, they are the most knowledgeable fans in the country. The thing that they know most painfully is the fact that they have not been able to cheer for a winner for 80 years. They are waiting for great baseball, and that's what we're giving them tonight with the best that baseball has to offer. The thing that I'm waiting for, their own son here, Nomar Garcia Parra. The torch has been passed from Mo Vaughn. When he runs onto this field, the place will go crazy. They have Appreciate Grace Baseball. That's what he's going to give them tonight. Nomar is the man of the moment for Fenway Park, but most of the lore of this place, most of the nostalgia relates to one man, Ted Williams. He is surprisingly unsentimental about this ballpark and about his own era, except for two men who he considers the best of all time. I really think the two players that are in our class by themselves, and I got to say it, is Joe DiMaggio and Willie Mays. Boy, they're both great hitters. DiMaggio was the best of the two, hitting the ball. Mays might have swung a little harder and missed a little more and hit a few more home runs, but I don't know how you can be better than DiMaggio. Keith, Ted is what Boston is all about. He will throw out the ceremonial first pitch tonight. I'm wondering if he's wearing a Boston baseball cap, whether or not he will take it off and tip it to the fans because he never, ever did it when he played. It'll be a great moment to see as we expect so many of them tonight. Willie Mays is here with a baseball cap. And Fisk, who made heroes of the 1975 Red Sox team. 
the introduction of the MasterCard All Century players next. Joe Buck, Tim McGarver, Bob Friendly will take it after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. Welcome back to the Blockbuster Video All-Star Pre-Game Show, brought to you by Blockbuster Video. And welcome back to Fenway Park. Welcome back to a very special Midsummer Classic. I'm Joe Buck, joined by my partners Tim McCarver and Bob Brenly. We'll get to our game tonight in just a moment, but right now to introduce some of the all-century baseball stars to you, we take you now down to Academy Award-winning actor, director, and baseball fan, Kevin Costner. I'm honored to be a part of this great gathering. Together, these players represent the most talent ever assembled on a baseball field. And now, our all-century pitchers are a four-time Cy Young Award winner, the all-time strikeout king among left-handed pitchers, Steve Carlton. He is the only five-time Cy Young Award winner, and he struck out 20 batters in a game on two separate occasions. Roger Clemens. One of the game's most dominant closers, he won both the Cy Young and MVP awards in 1990. Dennis Eckersley. He pitched his first major league game at 17 and was the hardest throwing pitcher of his generation. Bob Feller. The first modern day relief ace who saved six World Series games for the Oakland A's in the early 1970s. Raleigh Fingers. He exemplified competitiveness and consistency and won seven straight World Series games for the St. Louis Cardinals. Bob Gibson. He won more games in the 1960s than any other pitcher and is the pride of the Dominican Republic. Juan Marshall. He led the Philadelphia Phillies to the 1950 pennant and was the ace of their staff for more than a decade. Robin Roberts. He was the ace of the 1969 world champion Miracle Mets. Three time Cy Young Award winner, winner Tom Seaver. He won 20 or more games 13 times and is the winningest left-handed pitcher in baseball history. Warren Spahn. And now our all-century catcher is a hero to Red Sox fans for his dramatic home run in the 1975 World Series. He holds the all-time record for games caught, Carlton Fisk. The all-century first baseman. He was the epitome of raw power, and he hit more home runs than any American League player in history except Babe Ruth. Harmon Killebrew. One of the game's most consistent switch hitters, he is one of only three players with more than 500 home runs and 3,000 hits, Eddie Murray. The all-century second baseman is this all-time record holder for home runs and games played at second base 
won back-to-back -back MVP awards in 1975 and 1976 as a member of the Cincinnati's Big Red Machine, Joe Morgan. The all-century third baseman here tonight, the only player in Major League history to win batting titles in three decades. He led the Kansas City Royals to their only World Series championship in 1985. 1999 Hall of Fame inductee, George Brett. This 1993 World Series MVP ranks eighth on the all-time hit list and is the only player in World Series history to have five hits in a game. Paul Molitor. A clutch hitter who set the modern day standard for defensive excellence by which all third basemen are judged. 16-time Gold Glove winner, Brooks Robinson. He possessed an unprecedented combination of power and defensive skill and speed that made him one of the game's all-time greatest third basemen. Three-time MVP and 10-time Gold Glove winner, Mike Schmidt. And now our all-century shortstop. He delighted Cub fans with his 512 home runs, steady fielding, and cheerful approach to the game. Two-time most valuable player, Ernie Banks. Considered the greatest defensive shortstop of all time. This fan favorite won 13 gold gloves. 12-time elected All-Star, Ozzie Smith. He collected more hits in the 1980s than any other player and won the most valuable player at two different positions. 1999 Hall of Fame inductee. Robin Yao. Our all century outfielders are an exceptional all around player. He was a 24 time all star who became baseball's all time home run king 25 years ago this season. Hank Aaron. A devastating force on the base pass. He was the best base stealer of his time and one of the greatest in history. Lou Rock. He redefined the role of the leadoff hitter and is the only player in history with more than a thousand career stolen bases. Ricky. Henderson. Henderson. Known as Mr. October for his World Series heroics in New York and Oakland, he was one of baseball's premier power hitters and clutch players, Reggie Jackson. This 10-time Gold Glove winner, an 18-time All-Star from the Detroit Tigers, was one of the most durable and consistent players of his time. Al Kaline.
He led the National League in home runs in his, in his seven of his 10 major league seasons, and his home run ratio is second only to Babe Ruth. Ralph Kiner. The Giants say hey, kids. He played in 24 All-Star games, four World Series, and he won 11 gold gloves for his electrifying play in center field. Willie Mays. This three-time Most Valuable Player and 24-time All-Star for the St. Louis Cardinals was among the greatest all-around offensive players of the 1940s and 50s. Stan, the man, Musial. The only man ever to be named most valuable player in both leagues. He won the Triple Crown in 1966 and went on to manage the Indians, Giants, and Orioles. Frank Robinson. He was the last player to win the Triple Crown. And he is the only American League player with more than 3,000 hits and 400 home runs. Red Sox legend, Carl Yastrzemski. Ladies and gentlemen, you're all century players. These players helped make the game. This game helped make these men. Smiling like little leaguers on a special night here in Boston. One very special introduction to come. But right now, let's go to public address announcer, Ed Brickley. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, now let's meet the 1999 National and American League All-Stars. While the latest edition of All Stars gathers on the baselines, while they get ready, we take you down to another member of our broadcast team, Tom Brenneman, standing by with the Commissioner of Baseball, Bud Seeley. Joe, thank, thank you very much, and Commissioner Seeley. The magical moments here when the introduction of the 41 Living Legends, and now you have the fate of trying to decide whittling that list down for the All Century team. How are you going to do that? Well, we've uh, compiled the list from the experts. We've down to 100 players. Now the fans are going to vote into September. Uh, we've done it by position. It's going to be tough, but I have faith that uh, fans will do it. And it's so exciting. I can't tell you how emotional this whole day has been for those of us who love the history of the game and to see these people here and understand what they've done for baseball and in every way this has been just a remarkable experience and now we'll vote to see who the top 25 are and Tom to make sure that everything uh, if there are any inequities we're going to add five players later on so there'll be 30 but I uh, I really look forward to the voting I think it'll be terrific and uh, you've got a hundred players here and uh, it's tough picking them but it's it's been a great experience and before I let you go I'm assuming that Tim McCarver and Bob Brindley will both be on the all century team well, well, Commissioner probably, I tell you we'll yeah, probably let yeah, you go now I, we're running out of time with that question let's go to Ed Brickley the public address announcer okay. and now ladies and gentlemen the coaches and reserves from the National League All-Stars the coaches are 
from the Chicago Cubs, their manager, Jim Riggleman. From the Cincinnati Reds, their manager, Jack McKeon. And now the National League Reserves. From the Arizona Diamondbacks, outfielder, Luis Gonzalez. And pitcher, Randy Johnson. From the Atlanta Braves, outfielder, Brian Jordan. And pitcher, Kevin Millwood. From the Cincinnati Reds, first baseman, Sean Casey. And pitcher, Scott Williamson. From the Florida Marlins, shortstop, Alex Gonzalez. From the Houston Astros, pitcher, Mike Hampton. Pitcher, Billy Wagner. And pitcher, Jose Lima. From the Los Angeles Dodgers, outfielder, Gary Sheffield. From the Milwaukee Brewers, catcher Dave Nilsson. From the Montreal Expos, outfielder Vladimir Guerrero. From the Philadelphia Phillies, catcher Mike Lieberthal. And pitcher, Paul Bird. From the Pittsburgh Pirates, third baseman, Ed Sprague. From the St. Louis Cardinals, pitcher, Kent Bottenfield. From the San Diego Padres, elected to start, but unable to play due to injury, outfielder and all-century player, Tony Gwynn. Pitcher, Andy Ashby. And pitcher, Trevor Hoffman. And from the San Francisco Giants, second baseman, Jeff Kent. And now, let's meet the coaches and reserves from the American League All-Stars. The coaches are from the Boston Red Sox, their manager, Jimmy Williams. And from the Chicago White Sox, their manager, Jerry Manuel. And now, the American League All-Star Reserves. From the Anaheim Angels, pitcher Troy Percival. From the Baltimore Orioles, outfielder Harold Baines. Outfielder B.J. Serhoff. And pitcher, Mike Musina. And from the Boston Red Sox, 
second baseman, Jose Offerman. And from the Chicago White Sox, outfielder, Maglio Ordonez. From the Cleveland Indian, shortstop, Omar Vizquel. And pitcher, Charles Nagy. From the Detroit Tigers, Catcher, Brad Osmus. From the Kansas City Royals, pitcher, Jose Rosado. From the Minnesota Twins, infielder, Ron Coomer. From the New York Yankees, Shortstop, Derek Jeter. Pitcher, David Cohn. And outfielder, Bernie Williams. From the Oakland Athletics, First baseman, John Jaha. And from the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, pitcher Roberto Hernandez. From the Texas Rangers, pitcher John Wetland. And pitcher Jeff Zimmerman. And from the Toronto Blue Jays, third baseman, Tony Fernandez. And outfielder, Sean Green. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the manager and starting lineup for the National League. From the San Diego Padres, manager Bruce Bochy. Batting first, playing shortstop. From the Cincinnati Reds, Barry Larkin. Batting second, playing right field. From the Colorado Rockies, Larry Walker. Batting third, playing center field. From the Chicago Cubs, Sammy Sosa. Batting fourth, playing first base. An all-century player from the St. Louis Cardinals, Mark McGuire. Batting fifth, playing third base from the Arizona Diamondbacks, Matt Williams. Batting sixth, the designated hitter from the Houston Astros, Jeff Bagwell. Batting seventh, the catcher from the New York Mets, Mike Piazza. Batting eighth, playing left field from the Milwaukee Brewers, Jeremy Burnett. Batting ninth, playing second base from the Arizona Diamondbacks, Jay Bell. And tonight's starting pitcher, warming up in the bullpen from the Philadelphia Phillies, Kurt Schilling.
And now the manager and starting lineups for the American League. From the New York Yankees, manager Joe Torre. And now tonight's starting lineup. Batting first, playing left field. From the Cleveland Indians, Kenny Lofton. Batting second, playing shortstop. From the Boston Red Sox, Nomar Garcia Parra. Batting third, playing center field, an all-century player from the Seattle Mariners, Ken Griffey Jr. Batting fourth, playing right field from the Cleveland Indians, Manny Ramirez. Batting fifth, playing first base from the Cleveland Indians, Jim Tomey. Batting sixth, playing third base, an all century player from the Baltimore Orioles, Cal Ripken. Batting seven, the designated hitter from the Texas Rangers, Rafael Palmero. Batting eight, the catcher from the Texas Rangers, Ivan Rodriguez. Batting ninth, playing second base, from the from Cleveland, Cleveland Indians, Indians Roberto, Roberto Alomar. And pitching for the American League, warming up in the bullpen, from the Boston Red Sox, Pedro Martinez. Present and past stars out tonight in Boston will return to Fenway Park with a national anthem and the reintroduction to this Fenway crowd of one of the best ever to play this game. Ted Williams, he throws out the first pitch tonight. Back to Boston after these messages. Welcome back to the Blockbuster Video All-Star Pre-Game Show, brought to you by Blockbuster Video. Ladies and gentlemen, please continue standing for the singing of our national anthem. To honor America, please welcome Grammy Award-winning epic recording artist, a native of Dorchester, Massachusetts, Donna Summer. Yeah. 
Ladies and gentlemen, he wore the Red Sox uniform for 22 years. He wore the uniform of the United States Marines for four and a half more. He owned the left field at this very ballpark. He was the last man to hit 400 in a season, and he did it 58 years ago. He hit 521 home runs, including one on his last at bat. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the greatest hitter that ever lived, number nine, Hall of Famer, baseball legend, Ted Williams. Please, that the all-century players oh, I'm glad I didn't have to hit it. head for Kansas City. 
so that you oh, can take your seats the legends the of this game today's stars crowding around one of the greatest to ever play the game of baseball and one of the greatest to ever serve his country we try as hard as we can and hope that this moment translates on television the feelings that we're getting here at Fenway Park at this 70th Midsummer Classic. In just a moment, Ted Williams my man right here. You're gonna be everybody will throw out tonight's ceremonial first pitch. Joe, Bob, do you find yourself asking, can't this go on forever to nobody in particular? I personally hope it does because I don't know if I can speak. <laughs> what a moment. You watch somebody like Mike Piazza, who Ted Williams oh, all right. told at a very young age when he was 16, when he was introduced to him, that you will be a major leaguer after seeing his swing. Ted Williams was right, and here tonight, Mike Piazza on hand to help celebrate one of the game's greatest players of all time. He is a star among stars, and on a night like this, that's saying a lot. Whacking Mark McGuire on the left shoulder. Ted Williams will throw out tonight's ceremonial first pitch. He will throw it to Carlton Fisk. I know I saw Yastrzemski on hand as well. A celebration here tonight in Boston. With help from Tony Gwynn. Where is he? He went in. Oh, all right. Congratulations to Ted Williams. Congratulations to the game of baseball. Here tonight, a wonderful July night in Boston. Cool evening, fall-like atmosphere, and a moment that none of us will probably ever forget. We'll come back with the first pitch. The best the American League has to offer against the best the National League has to offer in a moment. Welcome back to Fenway Park. And again, welcome to our broadcast booth. I'm Joe Buck, joined by my partners here tonight, Tim McCarver, Bob Brenly. A big build-up to tonight's game, well worth every minute. Tim McCarver, I can't help but ask you, as we sat up here watching, you were so involved with at least two of those guys' careers, Steve Carlton, Bob Gibson. What touched you while you watched them being introduced here tonight? Well, just a ton of memories, uh, most all of them good about Bob Gibson 67 series here against the Boston Red Sox and the remarkable career of Steve Carlton the winner of 329 games. You're the analyst here analyze tonight's game. What do you expect to see in an all star game. It's usually tough to tell going in. Well there are a lot of sluggers here tonight and a very inviting green monster obviously. But keep in mind that these sluggers and these players will be facing the number one starters and relievers of their respective teams. Also, since 1933, the first year of the All-Star Game, the composite average is only 246. So expect to see, in my opinion, a low-scoring ball game. Which would be contrary to everything we've seen during the 1999 season. We've seen a lot of first-timers around here, and you watch these major leaguers walk around here like little kids. 24 first-time All-Stars this year, seven in the American League, 17 in the National League, and of the 17 in the National League, seven are pitchers. Bruce Bochy told us in our meeting today that he plans on using at least five of those first time pitchers. So if butterflies are an intangible in this game, perhaps a slight edge to the American League. We get ready for baseball here at Fenway Park. Hometown starter Pedro Martinez getting ready to go in the shadow of the green monster. Baseball after this. What a perfect way to wind down this millennium with an all star game here at Fenway Park. Built in 1912. First pitch, a blazing fastball that misses up and away from hometown starter Pedro Martinez, a 15 game winner, the only 15 game winner in the major leagues to this point. 
One ball no strikes on Barry Larkin. Larkin involved in his 10th All-Star game and he's going to have to crank it up another notch to catch up with that fastball from Martinez. One ball one strike. And then when hitters decide to crank it up Martinez throws the change up like that. Missing low and away two balls and a strike and it's just not an average change up it's probably the best change up of any pitcher in the major leagues today. On two and one Larkin took it over the outside corner two balls two strikes from mid 80s to mid 90s on that fastball and you look at the 15 game winner with that league leading ERA of 2.10 three complete games for Pedro Martinez. Larkin way late still two and two. You see the scouting report on Pedro Martinez great movement on the fastball we've seen that already works both sides of the plate. We've seen the great change up with the arm action. He also has a curveball. I mean, this is not fair. A guy with three top shelf pitches at his disposal. Still two and two. Leadoff hitter Barry Larkin. That'll get out of play to keep it two balls, two strikes as Pedro cranks it up to 97 miles per hour. Larry Walker will follow and then Sammy Sosa. As this crowd settles in on what has already been. An emotional night here at Fenway Park. Again, the 2 2 to Larkin leading off and spoiling a nasty pitch to stay up there. Well, National League pitchers are familiar with this particular action from Barry Larkin, falling behind in the count, fouling off a lot of tough pitches, staying alive, hoping that pitcher makes a mistake. Here's Bochi, a quick look at the manager for the National League. Looking at a 35 year old shortstop in Barry Larkin that's still one of the game's best. Got him with a changeup and a good start for Pedro Martinez in the American League. Once again, the National League starting lineup sponsored by Budweiser. Here tonight, Barry Larkin, you know that. Larry Walker bats second and right. Sammy Sosa hits third and center. Mark McGuire cleans up at first base with Matt Williams at third. The DH, Jeff Bagwell, Mike Piazza catching. Jeremy Burnett's first All Star game for the left fielder. He of the Milwaukee Brewers and Jay Bell will bat night at second base. And we take a look at the defense for the American League. Kenny Lef Lofton in left field. Ken Griffey Jr., the center fielder. Manny Ramirez in right. Cal Ripken Jr. at third. Nomar Garciaparra at shortstop, the local favorite. Roberto Alomar at second. Jim Tomey and Ivan Rodriguez behind the plate. Pretty good ball club. Not too bad. No. Larry Walker takes a strike from Pedro Martinez. One out, nobody on the first inning, and that's strike two on Larry Walker. Larry Walker, the MVP in the National League in 1997, last year's batting champion in the National League. 32 year old outfielder, he stands in hitting 382, best average in the major leagues at this point. One ball, two strikes. Joe Torre, manager of the Yankees, in charge of selecting the reserves and the pitchers for this. Goodbye, Larry Walker. See you later. Pretty good start for Pedro Martinez. This is what he dreamt about last night when he went to bed. First, the fastball on the outside corner to Barry Larkin, and now a fastball, a 97 mile an hour fastball that slices the outside corner to Larry Walker. You may remember that scouting report. We said he worked the fastball on both sides of the plate. And that's not as easy as it may appear for a pitcher whose fastball tends to tail back in toward the center of the plate. Tonight's telecast also available in Spanish by utilizing the SAP button on your television. How proud they must be right now in the Dominican Republic. Two of their favorite sons hooking up here in the All Star game. Sammy Sosa leading the major leagues with 32 home runs. He hit 66 a year ago. Taking on Pedro Martinez. Leaning back. From strike one. First curveball of the night for Martinez, and was it wicked? That's a good old fashioned knee buckler. Jelly legs from Sammy Sosa. Whoa. And a one ball, one strike count. 96 mile per hour fastball missing to Sosa. How'd you like to hit 66 home runs and not even lead your league? <laughs> 
man behind him in tonight's lineup. Mark McGuire, of course, hit 70. The 2 1. And Pedro Martinez is in position to strike out the side here in the first. Martinez used to pitch for the Montreal Expos. How many National League hitters are thinking right now, boy, I'm glad he's gone. MLB at Home is presented by Roman, the digital health clinic for men and proud partner of Major League Baseball. We'll talk about the history of Fenway Park as we go along here this evening. Kurt Schilling is on the mound for the National League. Another look at the American League starting lineup sponsored by Budweiser. The American League leads it off with Kenny Lofton in left field. Nomar Garcia Parra, the shortstop here in Boston. Then Ken Griffey Jr. hits third. Manny Ramirez has 96 RBIs. He cleans up and right with Jim Tomey at first. Cal Ripken Jr. at third. The DH is Rafael Palmero. First start for him, Ivan Rodriguez catching, and Roberto Alomar is at second base batting ninth. To look at the National League defense. Jeremy Burnett's in left field. Sammy Sosa playing center in this All Star game. Larry Walker in right. Matt Williams, Barry Larkin, Jay Bell, Mark McGuire around the infield. Kurt Schilling pitching. And Mike Piazza behind the plate. And those two will try to figure a way to retire Kenny Lofton to start the bottom of the first. And that's not a bad start. A blazing fastball for strike one. The numbers for Kenny Lofton in 1999. 95 miles per hour from Schilling, and this is one of the National League's best right handers. Kurt Schilling was seven complete games in the first half of the season after completing 15 ball games last year. He is the definition of a workhorse. Third All Star game for Kurt Schilling, his first start on 0 and 2, Lofton a late swing. And we look at the scouting report for Kurt Schilling. Over 300 strikeouts the last two years. That's each year. Premier power guy, heavy fastball, a hard cutter, similar to a slider. Still goes to late breaking splitter with two strikes like that. And Lofton wouldn't go after it. One ball, two strikes. On deck, Nomar Garcia Parra. In the starting lineup, thanks to the internet voting. Pedro Martinez perfect start for him on the mound. One ball two strikes. First ball in play McGuire feet Schilling a race to the bag and Schilling didn't win. Lofton with that great speed is on with an infield single. That's the advantage of the American League over the National League the speed of the American League and look for them to use that speed once they get on. But Kenny Lofton beating Schilling to the bag. Those are the kind of plays that you may see mistakes on throughout an all-star game because you have guys who don't play together all year long. That's a routine play for a pitcher and a first baseman who have played together all season long. Big ovation for Garcia Parra talked about the internet voting final week of voting as you look at Derek Jeter. Garcia Parra was down by about 30,000 votes. They tabulated the internet votes as he goes up there ripping. And he ends up winning that shortstop position for this All Star game by 20,000 votes over Derek Jeter. And it was no surprise to any of us the way Derek Jeter handled that situation very well and was happy. At least this is what he said that Garcia Parra ended up the starter here in his home ballpark. And I think he means it. I think he means it as well. Both outstanding shortstops, no question about it. Either guy could have started this ball game, and you wouldn't have gotten too many complaints outside of their home ballparks. Lofton is running, and Garcia Parra hits it into deep right. Walker back to get it. Nice running catch, and back to first is Lofton one away. This is the first game that Garcia Parra has played in almost two weeks. 
Downing the day off yesterday. Joe Torrey telling us before the game he will play two innings. One at bat probably, but two innings, and then he will allow Garciaparra to go out to the field and then replace him with Derek Jeter. And Garciaparra will leave the field with the standing O like he deserves in this ballpark. This ballpark is the type ballpark that defines asymmetrical <laughs> dimensions for a stadium. One on one out. Ken Griffey Jr. stands in. He'll take a shot at that right field side or try to go the opposite way into left a much shorter poke but you have to get under it to get it over the green monster here at Fenway. That was a drive by Garcia Parra that in most ballparks would have at least been to the wall. Lofton's running again and Griffey fouls it away. Well all these guys are all stars on the field tonight but some all stars are more than all stars. Ken Griffey Jr. 476 all time all star batting average you see where he ranks on the all time list. For the seventh time Ken Griffey Jr. the leading vote getter in baseball heading to the all star game and for him his tenth in his career which is in some ways just getting started. One on one out and Griffey fouls it back here strike two and Joe you talked about lift nobody with the possible exception of Mark McGuire has the lift of Ken Griffey Jr. He starts high and ends high means he holds his hands way up and even when he fouls the ball back you can see that tremendous lift there's more to a power hitter than just power lift very very important rather close over at first and McGuire had to stretch to get that throw from Schilling still one and two talk about a guy like Ken Griffey Jr. the youngest ever in the history of this game to get to 350 career home runs that misses up two balls two strikes start stacking Griffey's numbers up against the best to ever play this game. And there he is, youngest to 350 home runs in 28 years, 308 days. Faster than Fox, Matthews, Mantle, Ott, and Aaron. One on, one out. Griffey out in front, jerks it foul. We understand there's a large contingent watching up in Seattle at the new Safeco Field, which they will open. The second half of the season, there's going to be a lot said about Safeco Field. Looks like a beautiful facility. But oh. the early return out of that ballpark, Tim, is that the ball just doesn't carry there mm -hmm. with that heavy sea air. <laughs> Over the outside corner, Griffey is gone. And it's one on, two out as Griffey is caught looking. It brings in Manny Ramirez. And we take you back to Manny Ramirez in high school. Graduated from George Washington High School in Manhattan in 1991. That year he was named the New York City Public Schools Player of the Year. And he was the Indians' first round pick in the 1991 draft. And Bob, it doesn't take an expert scout to look at those tools and realize you got a stud on your hands. But you look at those pictures and see Manny Ramirez with an Oakland A's cap. I, I got to believe Art Howe's mouth is watering somewhere right now. <laughs> Same mannerisms in high school that he has as a professional player. One on two out and a strike from Schilling hitting 96 on the radar gun to Manny Ramirez. Third highest total at the All Star break with regard to RBIs he has driven in 96 in the first half so to speak for the Cleveland Indians. His teammate Kenny Lofton at first with two out and another check on him. Hank Greenberg did not make the All Star team in 1935 with 35 home runs and 103 RBIs. Juan Gonzalez 101 a year ago. Ramirez gets out of the way of a pitch just inside. One ball, one strike. Crowd awful quiet here in the first inning. I think everybody's got to get their batteries recharged a little bit. I don't think Kenny Lofton's going to be quiet anymore at first base. He's waited long enough. One ball one strike and Ramirez takes ball two. One thing about the running game is Yvonne Rodriguez of the American League can neutralize the running game. Matter of fact the National League has stolen only two 
bases off Rodriguez in the last seven years. The American League had five stolen bases, a record in last year's All-Star game. At one time, the National League was considered the running league. They yeah. stole 23 out of 28 over an 11-year span, but Pudge has stopped that. There goes Lofton again. The throw by Piazza too late. Stolen base for Kenny Lofton. Lofton in hand first. We saw Lou Brock when they introduced the legends. He would have never done this. And Jay Bell, the second baseman for the Arizona Diamondbacks, tries to drop a knee on Kenny Lofton. Very close there. You'll watch him come down with the left knee trying to block second base, much like a catcher blocking the plate. Lofton on the bag there and called safe at second base. That's one thing you'd never do if a runner goes in feet first. Never put that knee down there. Wouldn't bring it back up in the same condition. Three balls and a strike now on Ramirez. Guy who drives in 96 runs in the first half of the season. Used to this type setting a runner at second two out and he takes a borderline pitch for a strike three balls two strikes another Indian Jim Tomey waiting on deck later on in the lineup Roberto Alomar batting ninth it's like an Indians road game here at Fenway <laughs> from catcher cam the mask of Mike Piazza reaching up to get that pitch to Ramirez and a two out walk. A couple of managers talking it over there. Jim Riggleman of the Chicago Cubs talking to Bruce Bochy, and here is Jim Tomey. Jim Tomey. Not staggering numbers, but still worthy of all star consideration and a guy who's willing to do whatever it takes for his team as he's going to bounce back over to third base after the injury, the knee injury to Travis Fryman. Tomey with two on. Two out. You got Kenny Lofton at second of the Indians. Manny Ramirez at first of the Indians. And Tommy trying to bring him home. And it was the Cleveland Indians last year that ended the Red Sox season with a win in this ballpark on the road. Dangerous at bat for Schilling here. Tommy, a good high fastball hitter. Into center field, a base hit. That'll bring Lofton to the plate. The American League is out in front as the Cleveland Indians combine for a first inning run here at Fenway. A hit by Lofton, a walk to Ramirez, and the two out RBI single by Tomey. That was a high fastball, Bob. Right down the pipe. Didn't hit it crisply, but good enough. Well, Tomey is not your traditional sweet swing and left hander. You can see from that stroke right there, he just opens up and lifts and tries to murder the ball. That time, got the top part of the fastball. Lined it into center field. Now on the toe of his left foot and the heel of his right foot. And that brings in Cal Ripken Jr. For Cal his 17th All-Star game as he lines a base hit into right field. Here comes Ramirez. It's kicked in right by Walker. It's 2-0 American League. First pitch swinging and Ripken gets an RBI single to right. Cal Ripken the most valuable player in 1991 when the All-Star game was played up in Toronto. Ball bobbled momentarily by Larry Walker. Probably would have been a play at the plate had Larry come up with it cleanly. That figures to be the plan of attack for both offenses in this ball game. Attack these pitchers early in the Learning count. Don't seven. let them get to those devastating out pitches. In Schilling's Ranger. case, the split finger. Number in Martinez's case, the changeup. The designated hitter. And here's Rafael, Rafael Palmero, Palmero, who gets a chance to start in the All Star game for the first time. And you see those numbers, which are overwhelming a 355 average, 22 home runs, 76 RBIs. He's in his mid 30s and he's getting better. He has been one of the most consistent hitters baseball has had during the decade of the 90s. Joe Torre with the selection of Rafael Palmero when Jose Canseco could not make it. Undergoing back surgery for a bulging disc. He needed a DH and who better to call on and give this guy finally a chance to start. 
Harold Baines was added to the American League roster and Palmero inserted in the designated hitter role. One ball one strike from Schilling. Reaching for it McGuire makes the play and the easy put out at first but damage is done two runs for the American League. Mark McGuire will lead off in the second for the National League. Back to work Pedro Martinez. Here in Boston, we move to the second inning. American League coming up with two runs in the first inning. RBIs by Tomey and Ripken, and Mark McGuire steps in. Single season home run king takes a breaking ball low and away for ball one. 28 home runs at this year's break. A year ago, he had 37 at this point. Little flinch there, one ball, one strike. Another breaking ball to Mark McGuire. Pedro Martinez striking out three in the first inning, the first time ever that the first three hitters have gone down on strikes to open an All Star game. Wow. Well, stay tuned. Pedro doesn't look like he's losing anything. <laughs> Walks to the plate. We take you back to 1934. Carl Hubble of the New York Giants struck out Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Jimmy Fox, Al Simmons, and Joe Cronin in order in the first two innings of the 1934 All Star game. Trying to tie that record is Pedro Martinez as he works to Matt Williams. It won't happen. The ground ball to second, bobbled by Alomar, and the throw too late. Should be an error for Roberto Alomar, seven time Gold Glove Award winner. He's made only three all season, but that was a typical and an easy chance for Alomar. It's an error. Looked like it hit him on the heel of the glove, the hardest part of the glove, and ricocheted up into his midsection, stayed right in front of him. But Matt Williams hustling down the line as he does on a daily basis. Was able to beat it out. Obviously atypical. Anytime a guy makes an error on a play like that in an all-star game, it's atypical. But Roberto Alomar is as sure-handed a second baseman as this game has. One on, one out. And Bagwell looks back at Jim Evans and says, really? Strike one. <laughs> says they call that on me in the other league, too. Well, here's a guy who year after year, along with his second baseman, Craig Biggio, probably as good a Quinella as the National League has to offer on the right side of the infield. And he could have been doing it for the Boston Red Sox. Traded from the Red Sox in 1990 on July 31st, like that August 31st for Larry Anderson. Larry Anderson coming here. Helping as the Red Sox ended up winning the division but losing in four straight to the Oakland A's and then there's Bagwell who moved from third base to first base and he's one of the biggest power threats in the National League. Born here in Boston. And he waits for the one one pitch. He flinches on a strike that's strike two. Back in 89, the fourth round selection of the Red Sox last played here in a competitive game in a college all star game. Set up at a ball and two strikes. Two and two. The threats just keep on coming. Mike Piazza will follow. One on, one out. Two nothing American League here in the second. Throw down to first, and Williams just gets back. Nobody does it better than that man behind the plate, Pudge Rodriguez. Quick feet, strong arm. That way was back ahead of the tag by Jim Tomey. 
That is a lethal combination, by the way, for base runners. Quick feet, strong throwing arm. Three balls, two strikes on Bagwell. Runner goes, swing and a miss, struck him out, throw down. Williams is gone, strike him out, throw him out, double play. And Martinez has faced the minimum through two. Yvonne Rodriguez, seven-time Gold Glove Award winner. He just gunned down Matt Williams, and you look at what he brings to the All-Star game. It's already been said, quick feet, great arm. The American League uses those feet and that arm after an inning and a half, 2-0 American League. Behind that blockbuster video cassette, we hope it was rewound, it was a strike to Yvonne Rodriguez. Starting the bottom of the second with Roberto Alomar and Kenny Lofton to follow. Schilling likely working his last inning here. And with Yvonne Rodriguez at the plate, we go back to his work behind the plate. Rodriguez getting the ball to the middle infielder so quickly. And a little wink right there. Matt Williams. Got gotcha. you. The one thing about Yvonne Rodriguez is he plays so many games. He had 153 games three years ago, 150 for a catcher in the Texas Heat two years ago, and 145 last year. Can't keep him out of the lineup. Jay Bell to his right takes care of Yvonne Rodriguez, one away. And with Roberto Alomar standing in, we go down to Steve Lyons. Steve? Hi, right, Joe. Thank you very much. It's Pedro Martinez. Pedro struck out four guys to start the All-Star game. That's never been done. And on top of that, you did it in front of the hometown fans. That's got to be incredible. Yeah, it gives me a great pleasure to, to do it in front of my fans in, in, my, in my home field. And, and, and uh, believe me, I can't explain how happy I am today to just do that. You know, it's been a real long time since anybody won 30 games. You have 15 at the All-Star break. Can you even allow yourself to think about that, Mark? I, I don't really think about it. I, I mean, that'll, that'll put more pressure on myself, and I'm just thinking about the next start and taking one game at a time and, and then let the rest happen on the field. I'm, I'm not really concerned about that I have the chances and, or that I might get it. Well, certainly you were pumped up for this one in front of the hometown fans. A couple pitches you threw up there, upwards of 98 miles an hour. That's getting it up there pretty good. Well, I got plenty of rest, so I, I guess that helped. So, so uh, I guess the, the little extra rest that I got, I got today four days. I didn't even throw on the side. It was just this will be pretty much my side side work, and uh, then go get the next start. All right, Pedro, congratulations. Good luck in the second half. Let's go back to you guys up in the booth. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Roberto Alomar struck out as Kurt Schilling retires the first two, and we talk about Pedro Martinez. And he would have to be just Number about perfect, seven. Bob Brenly, in the second half if he's going to get 30 victories. Well, and he's been just about perfect in the first half of the season, but a lot to ask of a guy, Martinez, who has a history of running out of gas somewhat at the end of the season. It would take a, a near miracle for him to win 30 games this year. Danny McLean, the last to do it in 1968, won 31 games with Detroit as Kenny Lofton stands in. He singled, stolen a base, and scored a run. 2 nothing American League here in the second. Big swing by Lofton. And the count one ball, one strike. Lofton got it started in the first inning with an infield single. A little ground ball to first, and McGuire couldn't get it to Schilling. Maybe better put, Schilling couldn't get it to first base in time to get Lofton. One ball, two strikes. Pepsi wishes to congratulate Ken Griffey Jr. as the top vote getter in the American League All Star balloting. Well, Sammy Sosa received the most votes over in the National League. He makes his first start here tonight. And there's Sammy Sosa. Starting in center field this evening. Not unusual in the All-Star game for guys to play somewhat out of position. Sammy's played some center field this year for the Cubs. 14 games. As a matter of fact, the National League does not have a regular center fielder voted in. Lofton strikes out. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. In the second inning for Schilling, he is likely finished. Back to Boston after this, and a word from your local Fox station. This buds for the Blues, the Reds, and the Warriors. This buds for the Giants, 
the jazz, and the magic. This Bud's for the home team. Remember, we told you before the game that Joe Torrey told Nomar Gashapara that he would play two innings and then he would send Derek Jeter out once he took the field in the top of the third. I think what changed Joe's mind was that Garciaparra will be leading off in the bottom of the third inning. So look for Garciaparra to hit one more time and then have Jeter go in the ball game. And if Garciaparra should happen to reach, pretty good chance we'll see Jeter come on as a pinch runner. Right. Take a look at the second pitcher of the night for the American League from the New York Yankees and still one of the very few big game pitchers left in the game. It's right hander David Cohn. See the opposing batting average only 220 against David Cohn. Here's another pitcher with a whole pocket full of pitches to, at his disposal. I think at times David Cohn invents pitches out there on the mound drops his arm angle he'll throw overhand three quarters drop down almost to sidearm at times. I think it's time to drop down. <laughs> Look who's up. <laughs> New York, New York, Yankees and Mets. Mike Piazza leads off and takes a strike. Uh, drop down slider right there. First pitch to Piazza. What a series for Mike Piazza in this most recent weekend series interleague action between the Mets and the Yankees. He's out in front and lines that one foul down the left field line. Here's a guy who popped two big three run home runs, two monstrous home runs. Against the Yankees, as the Mets ended up winning their first interleague series against the Yankees the past three years, they won two of the three. 0 oh 2 the count. And there's another drop down breaking ball. It's still 0 oh 2. Bowie Kuhn and Faye Vincent, two former commissioners of this game, watching here at Fenway Park. Again, when they send out the invitation for the All Star game and it has Fenway Park at the top of it, you're going to get a lot of response. Bud Selig seated next to Ted Williams. John Henry next to Ted. His son as Piazza strikes out. And it's been six strikeouts for the American League side. Pedro Martinez struck out five, and David Cohn starts with a strikeout. The fastball and the changeup of Martinez to the drop down slider and splitter of David Cohn. No relief from the American League pitcher so far. I was talking about bullpens. It could come at you with different looks. These are starters that come after you with different looks. Here's Jeremy Burnitz, who ended up representing the National League in the final round of the home run derby here last night. He's on a big power display, and he takes a strike over the inside corner. Here's a guy who was thrilled to be here in Boston. Big swing. 0 oh 2. You can say that about every swing that Jeremy Burnett takes. He just does not get cheated at the plate. Chasing a bad pitch out of the strike zone right here. Always takes that big rip. Guy who hit 38 home runs last year. He fouls that one off to the left. I have seen almost all of David Cohn's starts this year. And I have never at any time seen him face two hitters and throw as hard as he's throwing tonight. Talk about that little extra adrenaline you get in this ballpark in this game. Five time all star is David Cohn. He misses outside. And the count one and two. Burnett set up for another strikeout. And he was nearly rung up over the outside corner, two and two. Backdoor breaking ball that time from David Cohn. The ability to work that pitch on both sides of the plate. From catcher Cam on two and two, Burnett lines it down the right field line, but he pulled it foul. I would have to imagine the Cleveland Indians and John Hart who has done such a terrific job putting that team together. One of the most dominant teams in the game over the past seven eight years has to look at Jeremy Burnett as one who got away as he lines one into right field a base hit. 
Down toward the corner, it should be a double. Dug out of that corner by Ramirez, and the National League has its first hit. It's Jeremy Burnett's and a double here in this third inning. Down below, Jeremy Burnett's resting at second. The double providing baseball fans with live aerial coverage of historic Fenway Park is Budweiser's own Bud One airship. Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Number nine hitter for the National League is Jay Bell. Longtime shortstop, first chance at second base, and he has really performed well. He's done an outstanding job making the transition across the middle infield, a career high in home runs with 24 already on the first half of the season. Trying to get the National League on the board here in the third inning. And his teammate Randy Johnson is ready to go out in the National League bullpen. He will be next. One ball one strike on Bell. Cohen falls behind. Jay Bell with 24 home runs on the year but none bigger than his last one. He hit a grand slam home run on Sunday in the sixth inning that won a million dollars for one fan. A little late with that swing 91 miles per hour from Cone two and two lady named Guy Lean Hoyle correctly picked the player and the inning. And a grand slam was worth a million bucks. A million bucks. Forgot we had Captain Diamond back here in the booth <laughs> with us. He remembers the name. As Bell takes strike three over the outside corner. That's seven American League strikeouts of National League hitters. And two out here in the third inning. Dropping down and throwing the fastball on the outside corner. We mentioned Cone throwing the breaking ball on both corners. He does the same thing with that tailing fastball. Starts just off the outside corner. From that drop down motion tails back you can see Rodriguez's glove moving toward the center of the plate as he caught the ball. Nice job receiving that pitch. Back to the top of the order and Barry Larkin who takes a strike over that outside corner. Third most in Reds history 10 time all star selection for a guy who for years was in a log jam at shortstop and caught behind Ozzie Smith who was honored here tonight. One of the best defensive shortstops ever and there's one of the best defensive catchers in the game making a good play on a ball in the dirt. That, that is a great play. That's a 57 foot splitter and watch Rodriguez like a hockey goalie slaps it down keeps it in front and prevents the runner from moving up 90 feet. He actually ended up blocking that ball with his left thigh but yeah. there's no such thing as a bad block. If you keep that ball in front it doesn't matter if you use the umpire to keep it in front. Carlton Fisk watching as Yvonne Rodriguez now will take home an all star game bruise back to Texas one ball one strike up the middle off Cone's glove and into center into score Burnett's the lead has been cut in half on a two out RBI single by Barry Larkin Burnett's with a double Larkin with the RBI single the one problem with that pitch is if you do Number not get it outside enough the right fielder, major league hitters Warner. hammer it and that's what Barry Larkin did that was on the outside part of the plate not on the outside corner and Larkin takes advantage driving in the first National League run well, perhaps the lack of mobility on the part of Nomar Garcia Parra prevented him from getting to that ball how about that play by Cone he just took a hit away from Larry Walker. A strained left groin for Nomar Garcia Parra. In there defensively, that ball went past him into center, and it's a two to one American League lead. Nomar Garcia Parra will lead off the American no, League here in the third inning against just a tough luck Number left hand. Yeah, tough luck Number lefty is absolutely stop. right. Randy Johnson Nomar has been about Garcia as good as a pitcher can be his last four starts. And has absolutely nothing to show for it. He's had a no hitter, a one hitter, and two two hitters thrown against him while his team has racked up a total of five base hits for him. He only struck out 54. Leads the league in strikeouts, opponents batting average, ERA. Garcia Parra, first pitch swinging, pops it into right center. Sammy Sosa wants it. One pitch, one out.
Well, now an interesting matchup. We're going to have Randy Johnson face his longtime teammate, Ken Griffey Jr., here in the third inning. And you have to wonder, every time you see Randy Johnson in an All-Star game, facing a left-handed batter, somebody he has a history with, like Larry Walker a couple of years ago, you might get the old airmail over the hat. Larry Walker turned around and hit right-handed two years ago. Playing it straight, strike one. Couple of guys that came up through the Montreal Expos organization. Larry Walker out in right field behind Randy Johnson. How does Junior swing at the first pitch? Given the history of Randy Johnson with John Cruck and Larry Walker, how do you go up there and swing at the first pitch? Johnson misses one ball, one strike. I would think he'd be ready to hit the dirt just in case. <laughs> I'll take one pitch just in case. <laughs> Randy Johnson with that typical delivery where he just peeks over the edge of that glove. That's not the prettiest sight coming at you when you stand at the plate 97 miles per hour two balls and a strike. Yeah you folks may have heard the term crafty left hander. This is not a crafty left hander. <laughs> on two and one Griffey chops it off the plate for McGuire. Tricky little hop two up. So no fun. No hijinks no craziness no well, tomfoolery not yet two years ago in Cleveland Randy Johnson's first pitch to Larry Walker <laughs> prompted Walker to bat right handed at least temporarily eventually went back over to the other side of the batter's box Walker drew a walk without ever taking the bat off his shoulder maybe the walk led to Randy Johnson rethinking this all star game buzz one over the head of a former friend. <laughs> former and current friend. He is a terrifying presence to left handed batters. Just hands the ball to the catcher. The 0 1. 98. One ball, one strike. He's thrown complete games this season when he was hitting triple digits in the ninth inning. We've seen that four seam fastball in the upper 90s tonight. Killer slider with very late break. There goes an all star game bat. And it stays within the field of play, so thankfully nobody hit with that. You see the new third base coach for the New York Yankees, Willie Randolph, a representative. He'll give it back to Ramirez. Well, generally you see batters lose the bat on a Randy Johnson slider that breaks down and in, but that appeared to be a fastball over the heart of the plate. Ramirez just helicoptered that bat down into foul territory. Willie Randolph has taken over at third base. Jimmy Williams, the Boston manager, started over there. And the honorary captain for the American League, Carlton Fisk, is across the way in the first base coach's box. Ramirez, high heat and good night, 99 miles per hour from the big unit. We go to the fourth inning in Boston, 2-1, to one, American League. We'll meet again. Don't know where. Don't know when, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day. BJ Serhoff of the Orioles takes over in left field. Kenny Lofton ends up in center. Another change in the outfield, but right now, what you talked about, Tim, Derek Jeter will take over at short for Garcia Parra. Joe was. Oh, that's a great moment right there. Joe Torrey saying that he, he made the move with Jeter and kidding Derek Jeter. He said the reason I'm doing this is so they'll boo you. Number two, Derek Jeter. Jeter, now playing shortstop. So a nice moment as Nomar Garcia Parra ends up with two at bats. He ends this All Star game 0 for 2, gets a wink from Joe Torrey. Sean Green is the new right fielder for the American League. They've got an outfield of Sirhoff in left, Lofton in center, Sean Green in right, Jeter now at short. Those are the changes. David Cohn back to the hill, and he takes on Sammy Sosa. Sosa stands in, a strikeout victim his first time up. First pitch swinging, pops it up to the right side for Tomey. 
little stagger at the end but Tommy puts it away and Sosa is 0 for 2. Well home run derby last night may have been won by Ken Griffey Jr. But years from now they'll be talking about this display at Fenway Park 13 home runs in the first round. None of them were measured at 500 feet but come on. Those had to have been 500 foot home runs. There are a lot of people around here wondering who calculated those distances. Well, he hit one off the top of the light tower in left field. No telling how far that ball would have gone had it continued into the night. Wire one ball, one strike. I get the opportunity to watch him take batting practice day after day in St. Louis. It just it doesn't get old. And he finally got a chance to display that power in a batting practice type atmosphere during the home run derby here last night. And he did the second half of that first round with a broken bat. Ooh, that just missed. And the count two and two on McGuire. You mentioned he broke one bat in the home run derby. Another bat was taken away from him by Pedro Martinez. Mark McGuire is down to one bat to use in the All Star game. So this is it. If he breaks it, he's gone. He can't continue. It's like when you were a kid, you lose the ball, you got to go home. Game's over. He is eyeing Mike Piazza's bats <laughs> in case he needs another. Mark McGuire will take a walk with one out. That's the first walk handed out. And when you think of Mark McGuire, you naturally think of 70 home runs. But how about this moment? September 8th 1998 it's number 70 his son Matt is on hand and what father can't get a chill watching that and you may have noticed Mark McGuire on his hat has Matt written across the crown of his ball cap. Big Mac on at first with one out. Big Matt is at the plate strike one home run number 62 by McGuire last year the shortest home run that he hit all year 341 feet. Had it been low enough it had gone through the wall not over the wall. Bagwell waits on deck. Matt Williams who has hit at least 20 home runs every season during the 90s. Guy who everybody talks about the season he was putting together in 1994 when the strike hit. How about it, man? What do you think? Matt Williams putting together an incredible season when he hit 43 home runs in just 112 games. Good swing, but strike two. It is 300th home run of his career back on April 6th of this year. National League Player of the Month in April. Hit 357 with eight homers and 25 RBIs. Barry Bonds does have a chance to have 20 or more home runs every year in the 90s. He has nine this year. Of course, Bonds has been on the disabled list for about a month. A one two pitch. Williams a late swing and Cone rings him up for his third strikeout. That is eight strikeouts now in three and two thirds innings by Pedro Martinez and David Cone. Looked like the splitter, wasn't it? I believe that tumbling rotation usually indicates a split finger fastball, the movement down and into the right handed hitter. Tying run at first. That's McGuire with two out, and here's Bagwell. Takes a ball high. I'm sure at some point, Bob, some hitting coach during Jeff Bagwell's life as a baseball player said, you know what? Look, you can't hit like that. <laughs> Spread out at the plate, got that severe uppercut swing. And all he does is pound home runs. It's an interesting contrast to some of the other home run hitters we have here in the ball game tonight. Ken Griffey Jr. very upright in the batter's box. Mark McGuire, a little crouch of his own, not to this extreme. But they all managed to get the head of the bat on the ball and hit it a long way. Jeff Bagwell uh, appears to have that invisible stool underneath his rear end. Rarely gets cheated. Two balls and a strike. And a strike over the outside corner. And Bagwell's thinking that's two. This guy's calling on me over the outside part. Two and two. Not too many hitters uh, have seen that pitch call a strike this year by umpires of either league. That high slider. Bagwell lines one into right field. That's a hit. 
Sean Green will get it back in. It's two on, two out. Now the tying run is in scoring position for the National League here in the fourth inning. Only the third hit of the night for the National Leaguers, and Mike Piazza, who struck out his first time, digs his way in. Number 31, the catcher, Mike Piazza. Piazza, who grew up in Norristown, Pennsylvania. It's an old story, but in a game like this, worth reviving. A former 62nd round pick of the Dodgers back in 1988. A look at Ted Williams, who told Mike Piazza at a young age, after watching him swing, You will be in the big league someday. Teddy Ballgame was right. Here is Piazza, and there's a base hit into right. Now what do you do do you try to score McGuire they will hold him at third and the bases are loaded with two out a walk and two singles here in the fourth inning. Tim Flannery the third base coach coming way up the line to see if Sean Green bobbled the ball then Mark would have tried to score but no way to try to score McGuire on a ball hit that hard even with two outs Green with too strong an arm. And Green did make a good throw right through the upright arms of the cutoff man Jim Tomey. It was right on line for Pudge Rodriguez at home plate. Very strong throw. Appeared to be right on line as well. Tony LaRusse is probably somewhere hiding in this ballpark with big signs. One says stop him. The other says send him. And I'm sure Tony was watching with his breath held as his big Moneymaker rounded third base. Mark's been bothered by a bad ankle. Huffing and puffing over at third base, and he just will not score on a ball hit that hard to a guy who can throw. And now the bases are loaded with two out to Jeremy Bernitz, and he's jammed and grounds one to first. Picked up by Tomey, and the threat is over. A walk, two singles, three left, four on the night for the National League. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. David Cohn. Good work in two frames, two to one American League. As we approach the top of the hour, we approach the bottom of the fourth inning. This night started with some of the greatest players this century being introduced to the crowd here at Fenway. And then it was game time, and it was Pedro time as he started this game with three consecutive strikeouts in the first inning. He would end up striking out five, and the second inning came to a close, and a strike him out, throw him out, double play, and a standing ovation for Pedro Martinez as he exited, left this one after two shutout frames. Luis Gonzalez is now in the game in left field. That moves Jeremy Burnett from left into right. And we have a new pitcher, right hander, Kent Bottenfield, a 14 game winner. One of the great stories, along with Paul Bird, two right handers for the National League. Bottenfield started and won against the Giants on Sunday evening. And then the red eye to Boston has got to be dog tired. Jim Tomey leads it off. Two to one, the American League leads it here in the fourth inning. Bottenfield on 0 and 1. This is inside. I liked Ken's quote about appearing here at the All Star game. He said, You know what? I'm going to have one of the longest names of all the All Stars, but I'm not going to have one of the biggest. But I'll walk out there when they introduce the lineups and the reserves. People will be saying, Who the heck is this guy? Released four times in his professional career and now finding success. A 14 game winner here in 1999 in a Cardinal uniform. The 2 1 pitch. Two balls, two strikes on Tomey. Out of nowhere, Kent Bottenfield, Paul Bird. A couple of guys who know what it feels like to be released. Bird picked up on waivers from the Atlanta Braves, picked up by the Phillies. We'll see what they have put together here in 1999. Bottenfield misses, and the count goes full 3 and 2. Randy Johnson won perfect inning with one strikeout. And now Bottenfield keeps it full on Tomey. The right hander Jose Lima beginning to warm up for the National League Club. Houston Astros starting pitcher.
Three balls, two strikes. Tommy leads it off and took ball four low. Let's take you down to Steve Lyon. Steve. All right, Joe, thank you very much. The AL starter for the American League, Nomar Garcia Parra. In the three years that you've played in the major leagues, you've had tremendous success. Rank in order of importance the highlight of you standing on that line and during the introductions for this All-Star game. Uh, I've had some pretty special moments, and that, that ranks up there. I mean, these fans are great, and, and that was something special, and I'll never forget that. You know, speaking of special moments, when, when Jeter comes onto the field to take over for you, nice little hug there. That was nice. What did he say to you? Uh, I said, go get them, bro. They, go, they send out the best to, to take care of me, so that's great. How about with the legends of the game here tonight and Ted Williams throwing out the first pitch? You hopped up on his golf cart, had a few words. What was the conversation all about? You know, I just said hi, and he was saying, you know what, no, we got to get together sometime. And I said, most definitely. I mean, every time I talk to him, it's a thrill. Uh, he's the kind of guy that was absolutely one of the best hitters, and he loves the way you play. Certainly the fans here in Boston and around the country got a chance to see how you play the game. It was an outstanding experience tonight for you. Oh, it was, and I, and I really appreciate it. I thank them every day, and you know what, I can't wait to come back out on Thursday and play in front of them again. He went over two, but we're not going to be able to knock that smile off your face. Let's go back up to you guys. All right, Steve, thank you very much. And congratulations to Nomar Garcia Parr getting through the home run hitting contest and a few innings here tonight with that strained left groin. And you can bet that the Red Sox brass breathing a little easier after he missed most of last week. The big series down in Atlanta for Boston. Ripken, who already has a hit, fouls that one out of play to count on one two. Rafael Palmero waits to hit next. Baseball's Iron Man, Cal Ripken Jr. at the plate, leans away from ball one. This consecutive game streak, and it's worth reiterating, ended with 2,632 consecutive games over a 14 and a half year period. It ended last September against the New York Yankees. Started on May 30th, 1982. It finished last September. That's back and out of play, and the count still a ball and two strikes. And during that streak, Cal Ripken Jr. probably used about 1,742 different stances at the plate. <laughs> <laughs> you may go to back to back ball games and not see him take the same stance in that batter's box. <laughs> Talk about adjustments all the time in the game of baseball. He makes them from at bat to at bat sometimes. Having fun over on the American League bench as they watch Ripken with a count of one and two and Ripken hops out of there. Cal Ripken Jr. started this season with a heavy heart. Losing his father to lung cancer. March 25th. Had to battle through that. Went through emotions he had never felt before. His partner really in the Oriole organization. Went on to the disabled list. First time he had ever done that. He was on the DL from mid-April to mid-May. And then here's a guy, Bob Brenly. Everybody said, come on, Cal, retire, sit down. You've lost it. Don't embarrass yourself. And here he is with all star numbers 12 home runs and an average of 313. Everybody should lose it if that's losing it. Cal Ripken has had the last laugh on those critics as he taps it foul. And it's nice to see him laughing, smiling, and having fun after a rough start to the 1999 season. You know the streak had to weigh heavily on his mind coming to the ballpark every day and there is no way in the world that for twenty six hundred plus ball games he felt good every day he came to the ballpark. And now that the streak is gone it appears that Cal is able to relax and play the game like the rest of the guys do. Owner of the Orioles Peter Angelos renewing his contract for at least one more year. Botten field on one and two and that caught Ripken. So a walk and a hit batsman two on nobody out and Ripken down to first. Physical pain here emotional pain earlier in the season as we highlight Cal Ripken Junior and show him with his mother and father Cal Ripken Senior a member of the Baltimore Orioles organization for 36 years his brother Billy Ripken. Quite a trio and a big part of Oriole history. And there is one of the game's biggest and best ambassadors, Cal Ripken Jr. Two on, nobody out. And Bottenfield in trouble here in the fourth inning as he faces Palmero. Hard hit. 
under McGuire's glove into right. They will bring Tomey to the plate. The throw by the right fielder to third is too late. Ripken goes first to third. Burnett's couldn't get him. And the American League leads three to one. A walk, a hit batsman, and now a single by Palmero. Not a good start to this fourth inning for Bottenfield. Mark McGuire actually dives over the ball. Had the glove been on the ground, he at least prevents it from going through to the outfield, but the ball was scalded. Hit so hard. Bottenfield trying to go outside to Palmero. And Rafael drives in his first run of the night. Now you mentioned, Tim, a lot of aces in this ball game tonight of the starting rotations of the various teams, and Bottenfield is no doubt the ace of that Cardinal staff, but not the overpowering kind of pitcher that we've seen up to this point in the ball game. Right. Palmero, they don't hold against him, and he was ready to swipe second. Rodriguez swinging, strike one as he fouled it away. Probably not holding against him because Rafael had two knee operations last winter. Looked like he was running pretty well then, and now Mark McGuire will hold him on. Where are you going now, man? He's back there. You can hear him talking. He said, I'm not going now. He was back there before. <laughs> First and third, nobody out. Rodriguez hammers after another, strike two. Mr. McGuire playing behind over at first. Palmero knows that he's a first baseman. Got a good walking lead. Accelerated right into his break for second base. Again, a guy in Palmero who is progressing and getting better in his mid 30s. Runners at the corners, nobody out. And the count 0 2 on Yvonne Rodriguez. Missing up and away with ball one. Number nine hitter is a guy hitting 324 with 60 RBI. Roberto Alamo. Randy Johnson, his work finished for the night. That stays up. Two balls, two strikes. Scott Williamson, the hard throwing rookie from the Cincinnati Reds, getting ready. Out of the bullpen for the National League. 2 2. And a good fastball from Bottenfield. Yvonne Rodriguez is gone, one away. One down, Roberto Alomar will bat. We'd like to announce the winner of a brand new Nissan Frontier Crew Cab. The first compact pickup truck with four real front hinged doors. The winner of the All-Star Drive to Boston sweepstakes is James DeStefano. Congratulations, James. Runners at the corners with one out. And the strike we're giving away. Houses are on yeah. here. We're giving away cars. Jay Bell hit a home run. A fan won a million dollars in right. the sixth inning on Sunday. Captain Diamondback provided that information <laughs> for us. Hey, you got to come out to the ballpark. They're, they're liable to give you anything. <laughs> the 0-1 the pitch. Hard hit and through Matt. Williams into left field in the score is Ripken and it's now a four to one American League lead at ball state down on Matt Williams right now watch Matt go to his right try to backhand the ball the ball hugged the ground that's a ball Matt Williams usually sucks up in a that particular ball coming off the bat of a left hander has a little English on it and was tailing away from Matt Williams. Went down to a knee to backhand that ball and it just kept moving away from him. So now runners at first and second on an error. That's how it's ruled an error by Matt Williams. They do not give an RBI to Roberto Alomar. Kenny Lofton stands in. You know better than I, Bob, but Matt Williams is a guy who learned how to play the infield first short and then third in college by strapping ping pong paddles onto his palms and fielding ground balls. Still has the softest hands of any third baseman this side of Mike Schmidt. He gets a chance on a pop up off the bat of Lofton, two down. Mike Schmidt probably saying to himself, how can they give Matt Williams an error on that ball? That ball's got to be a hit. We know he's saying it because he's right next to us up in the booth. <laughs> Derek Jeter will walk in for the first time this evening. Number two. 
Piece of cake, huh, Michael? <laughs> Ten gold gloves, Steve Carlton right next to us. We talked about lefty earlier. One of the legends of the century, 329 major league wins. It was a privilege to be a teammate of theirs, believe me. Runners on at first and second, and two out for Derek Jeter, number two from the Yankees, and he takes a ball up and away. Tim, you get a chance to watch Derek Jeter now pretty much on an everyday basis. Mm -hmm. You and I have, and Bob have been so impressed with him the past couple of years. What do you think of him now? He's been the most valuable player in the American League, in my view, over the first half of the season. Rarely do the Yankees play a game where Derek Jeter does not have a hand in doing something big. Defensively, on the bases, with the long ball, clutch hitting, and Joe Torre knows it. Joe continues to shake his head and say this guy is something special. Rookie of the year back in 1996 and a part of that world championship for the New York Yankees. He's up on the count here two and one. And he's adopted a more formal attire for the all star game tonight wearing spats. I'm telling you. <laughs> what is that? That's stylish. That's very stylish. No idea. Two on two out. Jeter a little out in front two balls two strikes. He is a racehorse I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's not unusual for the all star game for the various companies that supply equipment to the major league players to give them something a little out of the ordinary. I'd say that's out of the ordinary. Jeter strikes out so Bottenfield ended up getting into and then out of trouble with only two runs crossing the plate. Looked like Derek Jeter uh, giving a little uh, Nomar Garcia power right there before his at bat. <laughs> no chance any of us could miss that with those shoes. He strikes out and we're through four. MLB at Home is presented by Roman, the digital health clinic for men and proud partner of Major League Baseball. Down below a couple of changes as we get into the fifth inning here in this 70th All-Star game. Tony Fernandez third tour of duty with the Toronto Blue Jays never better at the plate and here in 1999 takes over for Ripken and on the mound taking over for David Cohn is the right hander Mike Messina. The only pitcher on either side that features a very unusual pitch. It's a knuckle curveball that's thrown with the fingertips, so really a misnomer. But Mike Messina, through all the years, the Orioles having problems over the last two years, he has been the one constant for the Orioles ever since coming into the big leagues six years ago. Sitting here with a couple of ex catchers as Jay Bell stands in. You can see Ivan Rodriguez have to go out. And talk to each pitcher who comes into the game, and you got to figure out what this guy wants to do. And chances are, Pudge has not even had an opportunity to warm the guy up in the bullpen. I mean, you're just out there flying blind right yeah, now. You've got right. an idea of what Mike Messina throws. You faced him, but it's completely different standing in the batter's box and sitting in that catcher's box. One ball, no strikes. Bell takes a strike, one and one. We've had an official scorer's change as they will credit Roberto Alomar with an RBI still an error on Matt Williams but an RBI as it should be Bell takes a pitch low two balls and a strike. So Matt Williams has the error he has committed seven so far in 1999 during the regular season. Two balls and a strike. Now three and one from Messina. Well, I don't care if it's an all star game or not three and one's a good hitters count Jay Bell a good high fastball hitter. That misses a lead off walk so Messina comes into the game issues a walk to Bell and a couple of times here's Tom Brenneman. Great Hall of Famer of the New York Mets and Tom 
You hear so much about how pitching is poor today. How do you compare the pitching today from when you were in the big league? You know, it's a lot easier when you're out of the game 15 years and you, uh, or so, and you look down at. And, and I, of course, I'm broadcasting, doing some broadcasting for the Mets and, and do 50 games for them. But I try to be as objective as I can on the sense of why is the game different now than it was before. And I look at it and I see more. I think I see more 2-0, 3-1, 3-2 counts than I've ever seen before. I see pitchers giving hitters two and three opportunities to be in the driver's seat, if you will, each at bat. Whereas I don't, I don't remember it being that way. Not, now I don't think the great pitchers are, uh, of any era are any different. I don't think I'm not talking about the Pedro Martinez's and you know the guys that are here at this All Star game. But I, as a general rule, I see more pitchers pitching behind in the count, and it's you just put your, yourself behind the eight ball when you do that. We thank you for taking the time to be with us and even Hall of Famers Absolutely. take the time to get a few autographs Absolutely. with Ted Williams right. before the game. This is important to us as well. This is a big deal and I'm you know you're just proud to be part of it Thomas. Thank thanks, you. thanks for the time Tom right. Joe back to you. All right Tom Brenneman thank you very much. Tom Seaver one of the best ever. As you watch Mike Messina a right hander. Safe to say very few if any pitchers. Got or get the leg drive that Tom Seaver had when he would bring a pitch to the plate. I think he made it fashionable for pitching coaches to start concentrating more on the lower body rather than just the the arm action and the arm angle. I like Tom Seaver with a tree trunk like legs and use them to drive toward home plate and deliver that fastball. Just amazing. One on when nobody out Larkin takes a ball one and two Tom Seaver used to get so low that he would often wear a knee pad on his right knee scraping that knee along the ground. Tom obviously right on about uh, about pitchers falling behind in the count it's epidemic in baseball. Possible double play ball Alomar flips to Jeter to first too late Larkin is on. Ball took a tricky hop and Alomar tried to stay with it. Not very well handled up the middle by two guys who do not typically work together. Our Chevy Trucks game summary as we play here in the fifth inning. Jim Tomey put the American League out in front with an RBI single in the first. Cal Ripken added to that lead. Pedro Martinez, five strikeouts, ties an American League record. Then it's Barry Larkin driving in a run with an RBI single with two out in the third. The American League just scored two runs in the fourth inning against Kent Bottenfield. And Bottenfield is likely finished for the rest of the evening. And here's Luis Gonzalez, who was a study in perseverance, a 360 hitter, third in the National League, one on, one out. And a ball low and away from Messina. I think when Roberto Alomar had to back up on that ball that was hit hard, he loses his chance for the double play. Derek Jeter with a strong throw. But because the hop took him back, Barry Larkin beats the throw. And once again, that's another defensive play that perhaps would be handled a little easier if yeah. Alomar was working with Vizquel or if Jeter was working with Knobloch, the guys that they're familiar with. One on one out here two balls no strikes on Gonzalez who with the Diamondbacks is playing in his fourth organization that is fair down the left field line into the corner Larkin will head to third dug out by Sir Hoff it's a double second and third one out here in the fifth inning for the National League. And Gonzalez is something he had a 30 game hitting streak this season. As I mentioned with his fourth organization which includes two different stops with the Houston Astros and he just hangs line drive after line drive all over the park and from foul line to foul line no easy way to play defense you see Tony Fernandez no chance to react on that ball down into the left field corner and one of the most likable guys in all of the major leagues I think that everybody is happy for the success that Luis Gonzalez is having this year. Guy batting 360 this year, only 267 for Detroit last year. He's at second, Larkin's at third with only one out. And here's Sammy Sosa. All of a sudden, the National League has the tying run at the plate. Sosa up, McGuire on deck. 
Sammy Sosa hit his first career home run right here at Fenway Park against Roger Clemens as a member of the Texas Rangers. That was the only home run he hit as a member of the Rangers. One ball no strikes. Second and third one out. American League up four to one fifth inning. Pretty good heat. Sosa couldn't catch up one ball one strike. Well Sammy Sosa has really zoned in his strike zone but that's the one pitch that occasionally you can still get him to chase that fastball that's up a little bit. Such an enticing pitch. A walk and a double in the inning. Messina facing Sosa. Two balls two strikes and those are two very good fastballs from Mike Messina. That adage in baseball keep the ball down you better not do that to Sosa and McGuire. That's that high riding fastball once again two guys who hit combined for 136 home runs between the two of them last year and both lethal low ball hitters. Second and third one out. Now the one two. Over the outside corner, two gone. Sosa 0 for 3 with a pair of strikeouts, and it's up to McGuire. Number 20. Some good old country hardball, fastball on the outside corner at the knees. Get a look at it from catcher Cam. Once again, Pudge Rodriguez moving the glove back toward the center of the plate, giving the illusion that that pitch is a little better than it really is. Strike three called on Sosa and now it's up to Mark McGuire. Guess we'll find out who really is the man in this situation. Sosa kept saying that last year. McGuire swings through one. 93 93 93 from Messina. Sosa kept deferring to McGuire last year. No no he's the man he's the man. Sosa played it cool and. For a while, heading into the final week, had a one homer lead on McGuire until he hit five. McGuire in the final weekend. Messina's just blowing it past him. Strike two. Men on at second and third. Mike Messina reaching back just a little bit more to get a little extra on his fastballs to both Sosa and McGuire. Nothing and two on Mark McGuire. Second and third, two out. Tying run at the plate struck him out. That'll go on the resume. Mike Messina comes in second and third one out strikes out Sosa strikes out McGuire still 4 one American League. Providing baseball fans with live aerial coverage of historic Fenway Park, Budweiser's own Bud One Airship. Budweiser is the official beer of Major League Baseball. Down below, a thousand changes. There are only nine guys out there, but they've changed a thousand times. And Brian Jordan is now in the game in center field. Sammy Sosa's gone. Vladimir Guerrero, one of the best young players on display here tonight, is out in right field. But that's not all. Jeff Kent takes over at second base from the Giants, takes over for Jay Bell. Sean Casey, good young player he is, at first base for Mark McGuire. And Mike Lieberthal is now catching in place of Mike Piazza as Jose Lima takes over for Kent Bottenfield. Jose Lima, one of the more excitable pitchers in the National League. Throws a good hard fastball, a little bit of a slider. His best pitch is a straight changeup. Only 23 walks on the year. Serhoff, his first All Star swing, and he grounds to first for Sean Casey. One pitch, one out. Let's take it out to Keith Olbermann. Keith? All right, Joe here with Mark McGuire, and it's not a real warm night, but there's a lot of heat out there. Everybody in this, uh, both pitchers, both teams' pitchers, seem to be throwing as hard as humanly possible. Yeah, the, the, those last three pitches, I thought I was right on it, and it, they, just, they jumped right by me. And, you know, uh, I like that, though. I like how Mike went right at me, and he beat me tonight. 
Did, uh, do you have a sense that there was something of an anti-climax after that uh, great all-star all-time collection here with Ted Williams uh, chatting, you know, just chatting, <laughs> hitting with a few of you guys out there, holding up the game, not holding up the game, but, but really sort of the climax coming first? Well, you so. know, the, the greatest thing about that is he was out there, he just wanted to talk baseball with everybody out there, and it, it was just wonderful, and he had tears coming down his eyes, and I saw a lot of guys that felt like they were going to tear up. I mean, uh, he's just he's just an icon here in Boston all over baseball so it was just great to be there. Did you get anything worthwhile uh, advice wise in those few moments. Yeah he asked me he goes he wanted to ask me something if I ever foul a ball back do I ever smell burnt wood and I said yeah I said all the time. <laughs> so uh, you know it's uh, something comes out of his mouth you, you, you take it to your heart. All right Mark thanks for stopping by we appreciate it. No problem. Joe back up to you. All right, Keith, thank you, and thank you to Mark McGuire. You guys ever smell burnt wood? You know, nope. I, on a foul ball? You know, actually, I have before catching behind the plate when a guy fouls one straight back to the backstop. Sean Green bounces one up the middle off Lima's glove. Kent tries like Keck, but it's an infield hit for Sean Green. Sean Green, one of the sweetest swings in the game. A guy who will be a free agent after next year, and one of the best young players. That's in this game tonight. And he's a gamer too, and that could be next to talent one of the nicest compliments that a, one player can pay another one. Andy Pettit of the New York Yankees threw an inside fastball back in late May, May 31st, as a matter of fact, and broke the left wrist, the bone in the left wrist. Oh boy, speaking of broken bats, wow. Bat just shattering. And a young man just behind the American League dugout able to knock it down and avoid serious injury. Tommy actually hit that ball off the very end of the bat and so much torque and power bringing that bat through the strike zone that when he hit it off yeah. the end, the bat just shattered in the middle. It looks like he's breathing heavy. I would too, man. This is dangerous. They spilled their beer too. It cost somebody about $28. <laughs> Talked about that helicopter earlier in the ball game, Manny Ramirez, and that one uh, lethal into the stands, but everybody's fine. They got the matching set. They gave him the handle to go with the barrel. One on one out here, and Jim Tomey pops it into right field. Well hit. Guerrero back at the wall to make the catch. 380 feet away. And then shows off that and nearly doubled Sean Green off at first. That ball was crushed. And it gives you an idea of what kind of career Ted Williams, a pull hitter in this ballpark, had. 380 feet to right field, and it stays in the ballpark. You could tell from Tomei's reaction. He thought he got all of that ball. Watching the flight of it, Guerrero goes all the way back to the wall. And then, as you said, Joe, showcases that arm, throwing it all the way back into the infield in the air. Trying to wish it out of the ballpark. In Cleveland, that ball is so far back into the seats. <laughs> Any ballpark in baseball, gone. And I'm sure Vladimir Guerrero was just as surprised to keep running, 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 and then standing at the wall to make the catch. Thinking, hey, it's a lot of room out here. One on, two out. And Tony Fernandez takes a strike. As you watch Guerrero go back. A couple of checks to find himself on the wall, is able to come in a step or two, and then winds up and unleashes that throw back to the infield. All Tony can do is smile about it as he crushed the ball into right. Tony Fernandez hitting. At or above 400 for the better part of the first half, leading the American League, hitting 372. Somebody's cracked up Don Zimmer. Don Zimmer may have cracked up Don Zimmer. Ground ball to the right of Jeff Kent. There's a guy who's driven in 120 or more runs in each of the last two years. He's all bat, right? How about this play to his right to take a hit away. Inning over. Go to the sixth. American League up by three. Jay Moore without the Yankee hat. Stars is Hollywood movie producer Peter Dragon in Fox's new comedy Action. Thursdays this fall on Fox. 
Couple more changes for the American League. Bernie Williams, who very nearly became a Boston Red Sox outfielder after he became a free agent at the end of last year. He opted to re-sign with the Yankees. The Red Sox made a push for him. New catcher is Brad Osmus, who grew up following the Boston Red Sox. Cheshire, Connecticut. He's behind the plate. What a thrill for him. And on the mound is a left-hander from the Kansas City Royals, Jose Rosado. The only left-hander on Joe Torre's pitching staff in this All-Star game. Wondered if perhaps he would save him until later in the ball game, should he need to play the matchups to try to win the game. But here we see Rosado in the sixth inning. And first pitch swinging, Matt Williams fouls it out of play right side. Guys, the monster's lonely. We play. <laughs> we've played five innings, nothing over the monster, nothing against the Green Monster. It's part of Fenway. Left-hander in now for the American League. Maybe the right-handers for the National League will come to life against the lefty. Good pitch over the inside corner. And the count 0 oh 2 in a hurry. A look from atop the Green Monster. Out in left field. As Matt Williams jumps back from ball one. We know that green monster is only 37 feet high the netting 23 feet high but it sure looks taller than that to me always has one ball two strikes on Matt Williams through the left side lead off base hit Matt Williams has his first hit reached on an error back in the second so he's on base for the second time tonight that's the way the sixth inning begins our American general season to remember question is. When was Joe Torre's last All-Star appearance as a player? The answer coming up. Think about that for a moment. If you look at that manager and a guy who could do anything in this game. He has been on both sides of the fence as a player. Heck, as a player manager. Now a manager for George Steinbrenner in the Bronx with the Yankees, and he has handled everything. Whatever has come along, the Daryl Strawberry situation, his own situation, both with his brother back in 1996, Frank Torrey undergoing the heart transplant surgery or the prostate cancer, which hit Joe Torrey at the start of this year. Joe Torrey came back to game duty right here at Fenway Park. On May 18th of this year, when the Yankees came to Fenway Park and played the Red Sox for the first time. He was even offered the general manager's job of the New York Yankees turned it down a week later George Steinbrenner called and offered him the manager's job. The 0 2 a little high a ball and two strikes. Bagwell with a hit tonight one out of two a strikeout as well. Facing the lefty Rosado. Bagwell fouls it back, still one and two. You talk about that green monster out in left field. That netting was not always there. Heck, the green monster wasn't always green. It wasn't always 37 feet high. But after a fire, when they remodeled this ballpark and refurbished it, they kicked it up to 37 feet high. Tom Yonke had purchased the team. In 1933 they underwent renovation here in 1934 had a fire put it right back together. They have that 37 foot tall wall 23 foot netting above it. Osmus keeps it at the plate it's from 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. And a look at Lansdowne Street beyond that netting out in left shoulder to shoulder on Lansdowne Street last night also known as Ted Williams way. During the home run derby. They've been lonely out there tonight, however. Not even a dent out there. And Bagwell strikes out on a 3 2 pitch from Rosado. In 1936, two years after the Green Monster was built, the Red Sox acquired right handed slugger Jimmy Fox from the Philadelphia Athletics. Fox cleared the wall with such regularity. Many windows were being shattered on Lansdowne Street beyond the wall. So. Red Sox saw it necessary to construct that 23 foot high netting above the wall out in left. But that netting 
was insufficient protection for the people down there last night during the home run derby. Bucky Dent visited that netting back in 1978 as Rosado misses high to Mike Lieberthal. Little known catcher, but heck, maybe one of the best all around catchers in the National League. I think he is the best all around catcher. And I don't think anybody knows it. 18 home runs, 61 RBIs. Now, most assuredly, Mike Piazza, not only the best hitting catcher in the National League, but maybe the best hitting catcher ever. He was putting up those kinds of numbers, but Mike Lieberthal can throw well. Calls a great game. Had a terrific year for those resurging Philadelphia Phillies, who were a good ball club. Lieberthal now set up at one and two. Leadoff single by Williams. Bagwell struck out. Rosado to Lieberthal. Might be a double play ball. Fernandez starts it. Alomar in the middle. And the inning is over. The inning started with a hit by Matt Williams. A strikeout, a double play later. We sail into the bottom of the sixth inning. Midsummer Classic, the 70th, 4 to 1 American League. This buds for the Blues, the Reds, and the Warriors. This buds for the Giants, the Jazz, and the Magic. This buds for the home team. Perfect shot of Fenway Park with a star in the middle. And in the middle of that star, Ted Williams, number nine. We move to the bottom of the sixth inning. The American League out in front, four to one. And Harold Bain stands in. Harold Take on a new pitcher, Beans. Kevin Millwood of the Atlanta Braves. Baines batting for Rafael Palmero. One out of two in his first All Star game start. As Ed Sprague of the Pirates, long time of the Blue Jays, is in at third base for Matt Williams. 2 0 oh on Baines. The numbers for Millwood, an 11 game winner, and he has been the most consistent Atlanta Braves starter in the first half of the season. Which is saying a lot with the likes of Greg Maddox and Tommy Glavin and John Smoltz, who are all, with the exception of Smoltz, who's bothered by that bad elbow, starting to get back into a groove. Maddox has won his last four. Maddox now 10 and 5 for the Braves. Glavin back on track. Smoltz coming off the DL this week. Baines the hit machine gets a base hit into left center field. Jordan gets it back in a leadoff single. Let's go back down to Tom Brenneman. Joe 50 years ago yesterday a color barrier was broken for the all star game when four players African American players appeared for the first time and Eddie Murray your thoughts on that even now. Well 50 years it's a long time but it was a long time in coming. I mean it should have happened a long time before that but uh, as Jackie Robinson did it for us. I mean, you know, they couldn't have picked a, a better person. And, uh, you know, it's just something you always sit back and you think about people who, let's say, paved the way for you. And, uh, you know, every time I see somebody that's an older than I am, an older ball player, you kind of tip your hat to them and you, you speak highly of them. Thank you for your time, those four players, Joe. Don Newcomb, Larry Doby, the great Jackie Robinson, and, of course, the fourth and final member, of that group as we acknowledge Rachel Robinson Joe back to you. All right Tommy thank you very much. The color barrier had been broken. By Rachel's husband Jackie Robinson two years prior to that. In 1947 and in 1949. That's when the color barrier was broken. In the Midsummer Classic. As Brad Osmond stands in at the plate Osmus. Up on the count two balls and a strike as he fouls one away and here's a guy who grew up. Learning to love the game of baseball, watching that uniform as you look at Offerman on deck here at Fenway Park. And Brad Osmus' mother Lynn used to bring him here to Fenway Park when he was seven years old. Brought a handmade sign that he made out of beads glued to a piece of cardboard that said, Yankee Stink. He still he, got that sign in his uh, bedroom at home. Still has it hanging in his room at home. <laughs> 
Three balls and a strike. Osmus fouls it back. Tom was acknowledging Rachel Robinson, the fourth member who helped break that color barrier 50 years ago, it was Roy Campanella. And you can see, looking at Rachel, it's a chilly night here. It's almost like a fall like atmosphere here at Fenway Park. Three balls, two strikes, one on, nobody out, and Osmus keeps it full. Well, that's one thing they don't know a lot about here is fall like temperatures at Fenway Park. Since they're not usually playing in the fall. Well, they can play, but they have a tough time bringing home the goods. Haven't won a world championship. The Red Sox have not since 1918. If you have heard of the curse of the Bambino, that's what that's all about. And they sold Babe Ruth to the New York Yankees. Owner Harry Frazee doing that to help finance and bankroll musical No No Nanette. No 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 More World Championships for the Red Sox since 1918. Still three and two on Osmond. And all of the World Series in which the Red Sox have played, they have had excruciating losses. All have been seven games 1946 against the Cardinals, 1967 against the Cardinals, 1975, and one of the greatest World Series ever. Osmus grounds to Larkin. The force out at second, and they can't turn the double play. Osmus, there it is, runs well for a catcher. Oh, no. And Osmus then in one on one out. And then in 1986, the ball going through Bill Buckner's legs. That's the fourth World Series traumatic loss for the Red Sox as Osmus beats the play. Well, you wonder if the curse will carry over. Here's the man who hit that home run, game six in 1975, with all that body English trying to keep it fair. Carlton Fisk is Jose Offerman stands in. Offerman has been in a tailspin. And that tailspin has continued since he was named to the American League squad by Joe Torre and friends. Looking at a guy hitting in the 270s with only 35 RBIs and three home runs. Started out very well. And this is first year in a Red Sox uniform. It's these Red Sox are trying to make up for the loss of Mo Vaughn, who left via free agency and ended up in Anaheim. What were the odds before the season started that Jose Offerman would be in the All Star game and Mo Vaughn wouldn't? It would have been good odds if you were going to take him. A check swing. Offerman went around in that strike, too. Offerman had a very good year last year. Getting his first try at it with the Red Sox. Came up with the Dodgers. Solidified his spot in the major leagues with the Kansas City Royals. 2 2. Back to Millwood. And because he couldn't hang on and make the clean play, the out at first. Down to second is the runner Osmus two out here in the sixth inning. Once again our American general season to remember question Number is 51. when was Joe Torre's last all star appearance Three. as a player. The answer 1973 as a member of the St. Louis Cardinals Torre appeared in the Midsummer Classic in Kansas City 1973 for Joe Torre a season to remember as was 1971. That's when Joe won the MVP award in the National League, batting 363, 230 hits, and none were leg hits. Joe couldn't run a lick, but boy, could he hit. Bernie Williams now is first at bat. And he takes a breaking ball from Millwood for strike one. Boy, Joe Torrey has had a lot of seasons to remember. Sure has. Most recently, the World Series last year against the San Diego Padres, the 96 World Series against the Atlanta Braves. Even agreeing with you, Bob. <laughs> the 0 1 to Bernie Williams. One ball, one strike. And last year with these Yankees, as we show and talk about Joe Torre, and we look at Bernie Williams, 125 combined victories for the world champions, 114 during the regular season. American League record for New York. Runner at second here, two out. Bernie Williams takes a good fastball, strike two. 
New York Yankees happy that Bernie Williams is representing the Yankees in this All Star game. He could very well have been representing the Boston Red Sox. Almost signed with the Sox. Switch hitter waits. Out in front, got a piece, still one and two. Yeah, one time also rumors that perhaps he was headed to the Arizona Diamondbacks. Captain Diamondback. <laughs> well, <laughs> at least that's what they told us. One ball, two strikes, runner at second, two out. <laughs> well, it's been an amazing year for the D backs. It really has, and they just pulled off a huge trade, really the biggest. Since the season began, as they got flame throwing right hander Matt Manti from the Florida Marlins, they had to unload a very good pitching prospect in Brad Penny. Also, oh. Vladimir Nunez, and there was a lot of talent going both ways. I think it was a trade that both clubs will end up benefiting from. About the 2 2. Full count on Williams. Lead off single by Baines. Force out hit into by Osmus. He's at second with two out. After Offerman hit a comebacker. A 3 2. Williams a little out in front. Struck him out. First strikeout for Millwood. A first time All Star. We go to the seventh. Back after this from your local Fox station. Something's going to happen to the game. I don't know what, but there's something at Fenway Park, and I got to be there to find it out. Is Fenway the one with the big green wall in left field? You got it. There's the big green wall in left field. You know, following the 1933 season, as we talked about, 30,000 pounds of iron was used to construct the 37 foot high green monster in left field. The wall is 240 feet long and the foundation sinks 22 feet below the ground. When it was painted green, there used to be advertisements out on that wall, painted totally green in 1947. New right fielder into the game is Maglio Ordonez, a good young player. Here's a veteran, Omar Vizquel taking over at short. Jose Offerman stays in the game. He's now at second base. Means that Roberto Alomar is finished. Ron Coomer of the Minnesota Twins now at first. Great story. Another story in perseverance. First time All Star. And here's a guy who may lead the league in stories of perseverance. Jeff Zimmerman, who is a perfect 8 and 0 out of the bullpen this season for the Rangers. From Carsland, Alberta. About 600 miles north of Great Falls, Montana. 500 people, the population in Carsland, Alberta. Jeff's father, Bill, watching the game tonight from that little hamlet in Alberta. Watching Sun fall behind 2 0 on Brian Jordan. You get the feeling there's not a lot else going on up there tonight. There's only a service station, a restaurant, a beauty parlor, and a grocery store, <laughs> and a hotel. Eight bedroom hotel run by Jeff's mother, Sharon. And here's a guy who ended up pitching in France. He pitched for Team Canada. He gave it up, sent out 200 resumes after getting a master's in business, wanted to try the real world, so to speak. And then he sent out resumes to all 30 major league teams, and the only team that responded two seasons ago, the Texas Rangers. And the only reason why they did, they had an extra work visa. They sent it to him. He went to spring training, had a great year, and now here he is, 8 0 with the Rangers. But he issues a leadoff walk. His manager in the Northern League, the man by the name of Marty Scott, who used to work for the Rangers, a good friend of Doug Melvin, invited Jeff to spring training, and the rest is history. Here he is in the All Star game. Here is Jeff Kent. We've already talked about what this guy does at the plate. And when you watch Barry Bonds during a typical game for the Giants when everybody's healthy, Really the protection in the lineup for Bonds is the man at the plate Jeff Kent. A look from catcher cam. 
on the 1-0 delivery. Jordan takes off at first. Throw by Osmus. In time to get Jordan. Down by three. Jordan took off, and he's the first out here in the seventh. Things change a bit in the All-Star game. You're not as strapped to that running game not being as prevalent. Very close at second base, and credit the tag by Jose Offerman. A strong throw by Osmus. And a good quick tag by Offerman. Even though he tagged him up near the shoulder, it appeared he got the tag down before Jordan's hand got on the bag. Good quick release by Osmus behind the plate, right on the money. And there's that slap tag at the other end. Now the 3 0 to Kent. Strike one, three balls and a strike. Main reason why Osmus is the selection from Detroit is defense. Thrown out 32%. Potential base stealers. And now Zimmerman walks Kent. So a walk to Jordan. He's out stealing. Followed by a walk to Jeff Kent. And the Green Monster remains unscathed this evening. Ladies and gives you an idea of what right handed hitters are thinking about that uh, green monster looming uh, over really past left center field 379 in left center it says 310 down the line it's more like 303 or 304 37 feet high and as we said earlier that netting 23 feet high. And it's a, it's a very intimidating presence when you're standing in that batter's box. It's so close. You can see it in your peripheral vision as you're facing the pitcher. And many right-handed hitters and left-handed hitters as well change their swing when they come into Fenway Park to try to take advantage of that wall. They finally got around to announcing Maglio Ordonia's out in right field. And there's a look at that big green wall out in left field. I circle, right batter. I circle that because that's what happens. Right handed batters come in, they jerk that shoulder out of there and end up uh, popping a lot of balls up to the right side. You know the wall's only uh, 303 feet down the line, so you think you can jerk those outside sliders, and that shoulder comes out of there, and then you're really messed up. Alex Gonzalez, the rookie shortstop from the Marlins at the plate. And Zimmerman still having trouble throwing strikes. Alex Gonzalez is the reason why the Florida Marlins eventually traded Edgar Renteria to the St. Louis Cardinals. They wanted to find a place for Gonzalez to play as good as Renteria is. First rookie shortstop to play for the National League as he fouls another one back and it's two and two. There's only one other rookie shortstop selected in National League history. Since 1933, it was Frankie Zack, a backup shortstop for the Pittsburgh Pirates in 1944. Zimmerman trying to retire his first hitter. Gonzalez breaks his bat, pops it up to Offerman, two out. One on, two out. American League leading four to one here in the seventh inning. Our Pepsi All-Star Game summary, Tommy and Ripken, RBIs in the first inning. Pedro Martinez will be Number talking 20. about that start to this one for a while. Five strikeouts. He struck out the first four hitters he faced. Barry Larkin put the National League on the board in the third inning. The American League scored two in the fourth inning off Kent Bottenfield. And as Tim McCarver talked about at the start of the night, this has been a, for the most part, well-pitched, low-scoring game. Here's Luis Gonzalez. He's one for one with a double and is only at bat back in the fifth inning. <laughs> Chasing away a moth that had landed out in front of home plate and was distracting him as he was looking out to Jeff Zimmerman. So he called timeout and shoot it away. It's an all star moth. All star moth. And Deserves to be here. One of the best at finding a light. So he ends up at the Midsummer Classic. Enough. Perry Larkin with. His own video camera. The shot of Jay Horowitz down at the other end of the dugout. <laughs> Gonzalez fouls it back. One ball, one strike. Jay, the gentleman uh, in the suit down at the other end, the public relations director for the New York Mets. 
Was he going to pinch hit? What's he doing down there in the dugout? <laughs> Not going to pinch run. One of the best in the business, Jay Horowitz. One so. ball, one strike. Luis Gonzalez, one on, two out. High hopper for Offerman. Gets it and throws it away. Makes the Bat Boys scramble over to third is Kent, and it's first and third with two out here in the seventh. And defense has never been the strong suit of Jose Offerman. First as a shortstop for the Los Angeles Dodgers, making 36 errors one year, going to Kansas City and showing right here an errant arm as he overthrows. First baseman by a wide margin. Very long stroke on this throw. Normally a second baseman with a very short flip throw. You can see the long arm action that time from Offerman. Pulled Coomer way off the bag and as Joe mentioned scattered the bat boys in the on deck circle. So now runners at the corners with two down. And the batters Vladimir Guerrero first time we see him at the plate. The one thing they say about Vladimir Guerrero as you look at his numbers. He can hit that unhittable pitch. It's a rarity to see him take a pitch as he took strike one. Fouls it away. And when I say unhittable, I mean the slider an inch off the dirt or a pitch up around his chin. He swings and he usually hangs out a line drive. Sean Casey on deck. Looks like he's autographed his own jersey. Guerrero reaching for a pitch, grounds it up the middle. Vizquel straight out of the glove. Oh, baby. Come on, Omar, you can smile. That was a heck of a play to save a run. Omar Vizquel, Mr. Gold Glove, from out of the leather, out of the gold, right to Offerman to end the inning. And now pitching for the National League. Frank Robinson and wife huddling up on a cool evening here in Boston and a new pitcher for the National League from the San Diego Padres right hander Andy Ashby Ashby with three shutouts on the season leads the major leagues really come into his own as an ace of that San Diego Padres staff. Well the six time gold glove award winner he has won six consecutive. Leads it off and takes a strike from Andy Ashby. What a play to end the top of this seventh inning. To his left, didn't have to reach in with a bare hand, just flipped it out of his glove for the out. And Vizquel pops it down the left field line. That will get out of play. And the count 0 and 2. Alex Gonzalez is now in the game at short. Stayed in to play short, and Barry Larkin is finally finished for the night. Well the new shortstop for the National League is a guy that's capable of making this spectacular play that we see here from Omar Vizquel flipping to Offerman for the force plate and the inning. The 0-2 to Vizquel. One ball two strikes. Mention Andy Ashby of the San Diego Padres and you can't help but think about the Padres and the job that they have done and Bruce Bochy has done. After losing so many of their regulars from last year's National League pennant winning team. That's foul again. Here they are 43 and 43 at the break. And Bruce Bochy once again doing a terrific job of that ball club. He's done a terrific job as manager of the Padres. Maybe bettered. By a close friend of his, Jack McKeon of the Cincinnati Reds. Here's yeah. one to a Cincinnati Red. Sean Casey. Perfect time to go to Keith Olbermann. Joe, I'm here with the uh, future of play-by-play uh, -play -play announcers, the cameraman and play-by-play -play man, Barry Larkin of the Cincinnati Reds, who has been shooting. Left. Yeah, I think you did a good job on it. Uh, you, whose camera is it? This is Casey's camera. Wh wh why are you shooting him? Uh, you don't trust our highlights? When I came in, Casey said, Lark, real subtle, can you just get my camera and just take a couple pictures of me <laughs> if you don't mind? I want you to get me some of me defensively and offensively, so that's what I'm doing. Yeah, the real subtle part is out the window now, isn't it? Exactly. Now, you have, you've tried announcing before, and now you've tried camera work um, what's next for you in broadcast I was asking my man here holding the camera how in the heck does he keep it still I can't you know I know I got a little ad adrenaline going on here but still you know he's keeping it still but I, he's got it on his shoulder I got it it's a freehand right here back to Casey just for one second what's that signature on the back of his shirt 
you know, uh, there were some things said. He's not the only Cincinnati Red that has that. I got to tell him on it, buddy. Scott Williamson, he has it too. But there's other, there's a couple other veterans here, like Larry Walker, that signed their uniforms before, you know. And, and I didn't do it, though. You didn't do it. All right, Barry. Thank you much. All right. Joe, back to you. All right, Keith. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. Barry Larkin, Mike Hampton of the Houston Astros takes over. Ashby got one out. He's gone. Well, there's Tommy Glavin of Atlanta. There's Randy Johnson of Arizona. And in my estimation, next in line is this guy, Mike Hampton of the Houston Astros, an 11 game winner, 11 and 3. Very tough left hander, has a good cut fastball. He runs inside on the right handed hitters. Very competitive pitcher out there on the mound. This guy was recruited by the University of Alabama and Notre Dame to play football out of high school in 1990. One ball, no strengths on B.J. Surhoff. He hits it hard, but right at Kent. Second baseman to his right. Good play. Two up, two down. So Surhoff 0 for 2, and this is first All-Star game. Joe Torre selecting B.J. Surhoff. The oldest first-timer in this Number game three. at 34 years old. B.J. will be 35 on August 4th. There's Maglio Ordonez, a 332 hitter. He already has driven in more runs in 1999 than he has in any other full season in the big leagues, but he is still extremely young. And he is the protection in the White Sox lineup for Frank Thomas. The White Sox have played good baseball. They're Jerry Manuel. Into shallow center, out goes Gonzalez. In comes Jordan, and the two collide. Alex Gonzalez comes away with it. The shortstop Gonzalez made the catch. Pitching change in the middle of the inning. The American League goes in order. We go to the eighth. National League still shut down, trailing four to one. And two of the stars of Harsh Realm, DB Sweeney on your right, Scott Bearstow on your left. Harsh Realm Fridays this fall on Fox. Smallest seating capacity in the major leagues here at Fenway Park, 33,871. They're packed in to Fenway. We're in the eighth inning, 4-1 to one American League, and Roberto Hernandez tied for first in the major leagues with 26 saves, takes over, and Barry Larkin does his work for Sean Casey on the left as Sean digs in. Strike one. Once again, Barry Larkin is doing the play-by-play, -play, the Barry Larkin Productions, right, narrated by Barry Larkin. Larkin with the extra batting gloves. All right, Case, get in. Tug, a little stretch before he throws. Good boy. Right on him. a boy. That's a knock. <laughs> <laughs> and now back to the real play-by-play -play announcer, Joe Buck. Thank you, Keith. That's a knock. Come on, Barry, a little ground ball to short from one of, and I know we've already said this about Luis Gonzalez, but one of the most enjoyable young men to hit this game in a long time, Sean Casey. He is a joy to be around and a real tribute to his parents because he is wide-eyed and happy to see everybody. And not only here at the All-Star game, but every day you see him at the ballpark, he's just happy to be there. Here's Ed Sprague digging in. First time at the plate for Sprague. It happens here in the eighth inning. Sprague fouls one back and Ed is in the hole 0 and 2 as you look at Ed Sprague I can't help but think of Jason Kendall one of the best catchers in the game today we've already labeled Mike Lieberthal that but hot on his heels Jason Kendall who had a horrific ankle injury in Pittsburgh which prevented him from being a part of this all star game Sprague grounds out Tony Fernandez took care of it. And here's a guy who catches well, hits well, will lean into a pitch if you need it. He runs well. He's got 22 stolen bases. And he's got the kind of attitude you love to see from a guy behind the plate, a real take charge player. The rest of that team looks up to him and his leadership. And he can do everything on the field that you want a ball player to do. We certainly wish him a speedy and quick recovery. Probably be right back here at the All-Star game next year. When I saw that injury, I couldn't help but think of Moise Salou. When Alou uh, damaged that right ankle of his in St. Louis that fateful day about four years ago. And if Jason Kendall wants any inspiration, 
somebody who can come back and get back to their previous level and probably go beyond. Look at Moises Alou. Right. From the catcher cam as Brad Osmus goes out and says, Roberto Hernandez, my name's Brad Osmus. I'll be your catcher for this eighth <laughs> inning. Gary Sheffield is at the plate. The lone representative from the Los Angeles Dodgers. Ball inside from Roberto Hernandez. Sheffield stands in with decent numbers a 297 average 16 home runs 47 driven in and a broken bat the ground ball to Vizquel he knows what to do with that Sheffield is gone and the National League goes one two three in the eighth American League coming to the plate bottom of the eighth and they're up by three. MLB at Home is presented by Roman, the digital health clinic for men and proud partner of Major League Baseball. Well, this game has flown into the bottom of the eighth inning. Cal Ripken. Seated now, and I think that this game, we'll talk about this in a moment as Dave Nilsson takes over behind the plate. And Bruce Bochy has done it. He has emptied his bench, calls on his typical closer, Trevor Hoffman. I was just going to say, I think this game is as much for the families of these All Stars as it is for these players themselves who are walking around in the clubhouses trading autographed items before today's game. Ron Coomer, the guy who I'm sure to him seemed like he played forever in the Dodger organization finally got a shot at it with the Minnesota Twins and here he is he thought they were pulling his leg when they told him he was an all star headed to Boston. Back toward us and the count quickly 0 and 2. Coomer a great story played a couple years in the A's minor league system suffered a serious knee injury was released by the Oakland A's. At the time he was working out in Chicago with Carlton Fisk working out every day hitting Fisk recommended him to the White Sox the White Sox signed him to a minor league contract rejuvenated Coomer's career as you mentioned Joe he went on to the Dodgers and then eventually ended up with the twins his first all star appearance to her golfing but Carlton Fisk and Ron Coomer who now has a one two count guy who grew up on the south side of Chicago and was a Cubs fan. <laughs> it's like taking your life in your hands. <laughs> you know he's a tough guy. That's right. There's John Jaha, who is getting ready to hit. And if he enters, both benches will be empty as Coomer fouls it out of play left side, still one and two. With a four to one game, these managers aren't leaving anything on their bench as we play here in the eighth inning. Both Bruce Bochy and it looks like. Eventually here Joe Torre will accomplish what they set out to do and that is get everyone involved in this game. Now there are pitchers left on the bullpen inside corner and Coomer is gone. Ron Coomer and his only at bat to this point strikes out looking and we look at our blockbuster all star video moment. And probably the picture and the memory that will all take away from this game. All of those present stars with some of the past stars behind talking with Ted Williams before tonight's game. Ted Williams giving hitting tips and talking to these current all stars. Trevor Hoffman gets one out. Go take a nap, Trevor. Your night's over. Pitching change in the eighth. He can at times be unhittable left hander Billy Wagner of the Houston Astros with 22 saves takes over here in the eighth inning pitching to Tony Fernandez Ooh. 97 miles per hour from that little body but big legs for Billy Wagner if it suddenly became a little breezier here at Fenway it's understandable Billy Wagner's in the game. Can Upper 90 can he blow. The 0 1. Another 97 mile per hour delivery. 0 and 2 on Tony Fernandez. And as if that was not enough, he also has developed a slider that he learned from 
Randy Johnson who came over to the Astros in the second half of the season last year still a pitch he's working on. But he's not going to mess around with the breaking ball right now. 98 from Wagner one ball two strikes. Wagner trying to close out the inning. Trevor Hoffman started. Too much heat 99 miles per hour. Two strikeouts in the inning. Trevor Hoffman now just watching and John Jaha who had a couple of injury plague seasons with the Milwaukee Brewers. They cut him loose. He signs on with Oakland and here he is with 19 home runs and 56 driven in. That last season cut short by an injury to his left foot had surgery to repair it was looking for a job all winter long the A's gave him a chance in spring training finds himself here in Boston for the All Star game too much from Wagner 98 strike one leading active relievers averaging over 14 strikeouts per nine innings pitched and that's when you take his strikeouts and his numbers and project them over a full game. The 0 1. Schilling started this game for the National League. While we play here at Fenway, you automatically think of one of baseball's biggest fans and one of the biggest fans of the Boston Red Sox, Stephen King. We at Fox send get well wishes to the suspense and horror writer, Stephen King. So successful and I am sure watching as he recuperates from that accident hit by a car a shattered leg and working his way back so we're thinking about you strength two to Jaha. Jimmy Williams wondering how his Red Sox will play the second half of this season as Jaha fouls it back the Red Sox will start that second half four games behind the Yankees. The Yankees meanwhile open the second half against the Atlanta Braves Thursday Friday and Saturday then the Montreal Expos move into Yankee Stadium. Two balls two strikes on Jaha got him over the inside corner and the breaking ball from Wagner his first of the inning three strikeouts for the National League pitchers Hoffman and Wagner into the night. show the green monster as we move to the ninth inning four to one the American League leading nary a dent out there nobody's even given it a shot Joe no. Buck Tim McCarver Bob Brenly with you that's surprising isn't it very surprising with the right handed uh, power hitters on both teams Mike Piazza Mark McGuire Sammy Sosa unscathed as a green monster tonight well, and I was just going to say as he said at the start you didn't say it he said it this would be a well pitched low scoring game that's what we've had. Well we, we anticipate or I anticipated that perhaps some of the first year all star pitchers would uh, maybe have a case of the butterflies have a little trouble finding the strike zone fall behind some hitters and at that point perhaps the offense would take over the ball game but it has just not happened the pitchers have been on top of their game throughout this ball game. Dave Nilsson will lead it off against the new pitcher for the American League. That's John Wetland. Wetland takes over. It's a four to one game here in the ninth inning. And a fastball misses up. One ball, one strike. So the National League with only one run scored here tonight. The RBI belongs to Barry Larkin way back in the third. The one one to Nilsson. Strike two. Brad Osmus still behind the plate. Defensively, same alignment for the American League. And again, Joe Torre and Bruce Bochy getting all their reserves into the game here this evening as Troy Percival, the flame throwing right hander, 
of the Angels gets loose out in the American League bullpen. Four to one. The AL out in front. Nilsson, after a high fastball, still one and two. Dave Nilsson from Brisbane, Australia, one of 20 foreign players for both teams in tonight's game, <laughs> led by the Dominican Republic with six representatives. He's set up here to ball in two strikes. A little high. Dave Nilsson is the commissioner of the Winter League, which is played down in Australia, largely, Bob, because he owns the league. <laughs> That's one way to do it. Want to guarantee yourself uh, you know, a little more playing time, some at bats in the winter by the league. <laughs> Nilsson keeps it two and two. The Olympics being played uh, in Sydney, Australia next summer. And as we look at that American League bench, we look at the international flavors. Seven from the Dominican Republic, four from Puerto Rico, three from Venezuela, two from Cuba, two from Canada. Nilsson is from Australia as he pops it foul down the left side. That'll get out of play. Pretty good at bat here for Dave, and the count's still two and two. Vladimir Guerrero, who plays with his brother Wilton Guerrero in Montreal. Ron Rodriguez. Two balls, two strikes on Nilsson. First at bat for Nilsson. Straightens up, ball three. Well, here's John Wetland, the guy who we became very familiar with back in 1996 when he was closing down games and was the eventual MVP of the World Series in 96 for the Yankees. And he has a tendency, like some very good closers in the ninth inning, if it's a three run game, they'll give up two. If it's a two run game, they may give up one. It's never easy. It's very rarely quick and easy with even the best in this game. Didn't recognize John Wetland with a clean hat on. <laughs> Wore the same one during the 1996 season while pitching for the Yankees. Nilsson pops another one foul. That will get back and out of play. Dave is putting on a battle here to try to get on to start the night. Nilsson is a potential free agent at the end of the year, and he is still considering not signing a new contract to open him up be available to play for Australia in the upcoming Olympics. Nilsson strikes out and that's the way we start the ninth inning. Well tonight after the game most of you can stay tuned for your local news but for a complete all star post game report turn to your regional Fox Sports Net affiliate and join Keith Olbermann and Steve Lyons for continuing coverage of this midsummer classic. We will have the presentation of the MVP award after this game as Jordan takes ball one. The game dominated by pitching to this point might select a pitcher and if you select a pitcher how can you look past Pedro Martinez. He pretty much set the tone for this entire ball game that it was going to be pitching dominated as you mentioned Tim a lot of aces a lot of bullpen aces in this game in the year of big offense. Good pitching still beats good hitting. Look at all those strikeouts piling up here in this All Star game as Jordan takes a strike and now he's set up at one and two. 22 strikeouts combined tonight. Record for a nine inning game in an All Star game. Jordan with a 2 2 count. The record for strikeouts by one league. It's already been tied by the American League. That record is 12. It struck out 12 National Leaguers so far tonight. Jordan trying to avoid becoming the 13th, which would set a new record. Keeps it two and two. On deck is Jeff Kent. This crowd has been subdued really since the first pitch. Keith Olbermann touched on it. Good pitching will put you to sleep. 
especially after the home run derby last night when balls were flying out of here all over the place. Jordan lines a base hit into right field and the National League won't go quietly here in the ninth. Jordan has walked he now has his first all star game hit and it's one on one out for Jeff Kent. Number 21 the second baseman Jeff Kent. Why is Joe Torre and Mel Stottlemyre smiling well him I mean you've got John Wetland on the mound right now <laughs> and if he struggles just call on Troy Percival. Already had Roberto Hernandez. He worked a perfect eighth. Kent takes a strike. Charles Nagy of the Cleveland Indians did not get into tonight's game. I've shown you Percival, who is remaining out in that American League bullpen. And for the National League, Paul Bird. Along with Williamson of Cincinnati. Potential double play ball. Back to the mound to second and on to first to end this 70th Midsummer Classic. Four to one. The American League wins it on a dangerous shattered bat and a ground ball back to Wetland. Well, that's the way this one ends with a loud double play. Hit into by Kent. We'll come back to Fenway Park here in Boston. Our thoughts as we wrap up the 70th Midsummer Classic. A double play ball ends it. The American League wins it 4 to 1. Back in a moment. Well, providing baseball fans with live aerial coverage of historic Fenway Park tonight, Budweiser's own Bud One Airship, Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball, and we thank them for their help. Here tonight. Let's take you down to the field and Keith Olbermann. Keith. All right, Joe, we're here with uh, Commissioner Bud Selig and the MVP of the 1999 All Star Game, and you probably can guess who the honors go to. Commissioner? Thank you very much, Keith. Uh, Pedro, on behalf of Major League Baseball, we're very proud to present the most valuable player award for the 1990 1999 game. Your performance, five strikeouts and two innings, was overpowering. And so on behalf of everybody, congratulations. A job very, very well done. Thank you. All right, Pedro. This is only the eighth time in baseball history. Thank you, Commissioner, that the uh, that a pitcher from the hometown team has started the All-Star game, and it looked like you could not have been more pumped. Were you completely excited? Is this as good as it gets? Yes, I was, I was really happy and very excited to be out there, especially representing the Boston Red Sox and my, my hometown. Uh, it, it's really a great honor to also represent the Latinos in the community and also back home. Now you don't really try to for in the regular season for a strikeout but were you trying tonight I mean four in a row to start the game as as, as we watch them again to open the game nobody's ever done anything like that but on of the uh, three in a row in the first inning and then a fourth in the second were you going for strikeouts tonight. No no I I was just trying to hit my target I after seeing those guys hitting the BP uh, last night in the, in the home run contest I wanted to make sure I made my pitches where I wanted to otherwise I was going to get hurt. And um, I made sure of that, and the strikeout just came on. So Sosa, McGuire, doesn't make any difference to you who they are? No, I approach everybody with the same attitude and the same aggressiveness. I, I don't have anybody in this league that I can distinguish from those guys. Congratulations on the performance on the MVP award and uh, the big celebration that really has awakened this crowd at the last moment. Congratulations, Pedro. Well, thank you very much. This is also uh, another one for them, too. Very good. All right, Pedro Martinez, the MVP of the All-Star Game, holding the trophy aloft and now back upstairs to Joe Buck. All right, Keith, thank you. The unanimous decision, the most valuable player of the 70th Midsummer Classic, Pedro Martinez, significant here in Boston as they make a push for a new stadium, hopefully to open in 2003. The hometown starter strikes out five. And he's the MVP. Back in a moment. Well there it is a four to one final the American League wins the Midsummer Classic for the 29th time against 40 losses there has been one tie in all star game history. What a night here in Boston Fenway Park a park that was built in 1912 and at least as far as all star games are concerned we say goodbye to the millennium. 
with this Midsummer Classic in Cleveland. For Tim McCarver, Bob Brenly, Tom Brenneman, Keith Olbermann, Steve Lyons, our producer, Michael Weissman, director, Billy Webb, Ed Gorin, David Hill, Bill Brown. We thank you for watching. I'm Joe Buck, a night to remember in Boston. Baseball celebrated the young and old, those who have made us love this game. For all of us at Fox, thanks for watching tonight, and good evening. And they'll watch the game. It'll be as if they dipped themselves in magic waters. The one constant through all the years, Ray, has been baseball. America has rolled by like an army of steamrollers. It's been erased like a blackboard, rebuilt and erased again. But baseball has marked the time. This field, this game, it's a part of our past, Ray. It reminds us of all that once was good, and it could be again. Oh, people will come, Ray. People will most definitely come. People will always come back to baseball. They say baseball is our pastime. But the game of baseball means so much more. For the better part of the 20th century, baseball has marvelously marked our time. The faces may change, but the game remains constant and perfect. And with the millennium setting summer sun, baseball is ready to take its place into the 21st century and beyond. hundred years from now the ball will still be thrown from 60 feet 6 inches and daylight will always remain 90 feet away. Millions of fans will still be in awe of a wooden bat sending a small leather ball disappearing into the night. And with every summer baseball's greatest stars will come out and shine ever bright. July will always mean shining stars aligned in perfect symmetry. Baseball will always be the great American game because in baseball when one king fades into history another king will rise as history will always repeat when an iron horse loses his steam another man of iron will be there to carry on and when we wonder who will dominate like this lefty once did another will walk to the top of the hill and right here in this not so perfect perfect park the Fenway faithful thought they saw the last great hitter a shortstop named Nomar is here and now ready to push forward. Baseball will live on well beyond the next century. Why? Because baseball is about rebirth. And every summer in July, we're reminded of our youth as we marvel this year's model called the Boys of Summer. Hey, is this place heaven? Yeah, I guess this is only a park, but I could have sworn this was heaven. <laughs>